The only way to get what you want is to become a human yourself. Uh, my sweet child, that's what I do. It's what I live for. To help the four unfortunate merfolk like yourself. Poor souls with no one else to turn to. <clears throat> I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me a witch. But you'll find that nowadays I've mended all my ways. Repented, seen the light, made to switch to this. And fortunately, know a little magic. It's a talent that I always have possessed. And dear lady, please don't laugh. I use it on behalf of the miserable and the lonely, depressed, pathetic. Poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. This one longing to be thinner. This one wants to get the girl and do I help them? Yes, I do. Those poor unfortunate souls, so sad, so true. They come flocking to my cauldron, crying spells of Ursula, please, and I help them? Yes, I do. Now it's happened once or twice, someone couldn't pay the price. And I'm afraid I had to rake them across the coals. Yes, I've had an odd complaint, but on the whole, I've been a saint. To those poor, unfortunate souls! <laughs> Have we got a deal? If I become a human, I'll never be with my father or sisters ever again. But you'll have your man, he 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 he. Life's full of choices, isn't it? <laughs> oh, and there's one more thing. We haven't discussed the subject of payment. But I haven't, I'm not asking for much, just a token. Really a trifle. What I want is your voice. But without my voice, how can I? You'll have your looks, your pretty face, and don't underestimate the importance of body language. <laughs> the men up there, they don't like a lot of blabber. They think a girl who gossips is a bore. Yet on land, it's much preferred for ladies to say a word, and after all, dear, what is idle babble? Come on that impressed with conversation, true gentlemen avoid it, when they can, but they dote and swoon and fawn on a lady who's withdrawn, and she's who can hold a tongue and get a man, come on, those poor unfortunate souls, go ahead, make your choice. I'm a very busy woman and I haven't got all day, it won't cost you much, just your voice. Those poor unfortunate souls, so sad, but true. If you want to cross the bridge, my sweet, you've got to pay the toll. Take a gulp, take a breath, go ahead, sign the scroll. Folsom Jetsam now get her boys, the boss is on a roll. This poor, fortunate, fortunate soul. Belagu Serva come winds of the Caspian Sea. Laryngus and Max Garrod in a voice to me. Now sing! Ah, ah. Keep singing, keep singing. Ah, ah, ah. What else do you feel like singing, Sean? Uh, what do you really feel like singing? 
Nothing. <laughs> uh, what do you want to sing? Let's sing Yellow Soap Moon. I don't want it. I don't want it. In the town where I was born lived a man who sailed to sea. Actually, I don't feel like singing this. Let's sing, uh, let's sing. Let's sing crying. I was all right for a while. I could smile for a while. But then I saw you last night. You held my hand so tight as you stopped to say hello. You wish me well. You couldn't tell that I've been crying. Over you, crying over you, but once you said so long, left me standing all alone, alone and crying, 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 it's hard to understand by the touch of your hand can start me crying I thought that I was over you but it's true so true I love you even more than I did before but darling what can I do? For you don't love me And I'll always be Crying over you Crying over you Yes, now you're gone Left me standing from this moment on, alone, crying, 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 yes, crying, crying, oh, for That was great, Sean. Thanks. Dude, I do feel better. I do feel better at singing. Nobody's listening, right? Uh, I'm going to say some weird personal shit. You can't say weird personal shit until after you dance with the dogs. Right, so I have a rule where I have to dance with the dog and then I can say personal shit. All right. All right, so my goal is to make my dog's tail wag. And, and whatever can be said about this activity, if my dog's tail wagged at the end of it, that was good. So, so that's good. All right, Milo. 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 Friendly dude. Hey dude. What's up dude? Oh, Alright, so my goal is to make my dog's tail wag. And what works? What works for making my dog's tail wag? Uh, flipping back and forth, 
falling down, slapping the ground, saying, making noise, going, Woo! and then uh, Shenny turns and running. And I watched my video yesterday, and his tail was wagging. He gets happy, so that's the goal. The goal is to make my dog's tail wag, and that's good. Okay, ready? He's in kind of a somber mood. It might be harder than normal. Also, I should put on some pants that uh, aren't going to fall down. Let's put on some pants that aren't going to fall down. Because they provide quality care. This 
No. All right, Sean, you get to talk. All right, Sean, what do you want to say? Uh, I'm going to say some depressing stuff. So if, if you don't want to hear... If you don't want to hear depressing stuff, if you don't want to hear depressing stuff, just don't watch my thing. Um, but this is this is life now for me, and it's gonna be my life for the rest of my life. So, gotta do what you gotta do. Murphy, dogs off, dogs off, out, 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 dogs off. I have to just talk some depressing therapy stuff just for catharsis. Anyway, uh, no one should listen to any of this. This is all just gonna be boring droning, self-indulgent stuff. I don't want to drag anybody down. I don't want to make anybody depressed. But I have to, like, talk. I have to, like, say my thoughts because otherwise it's all... This is my time to do that. But, uh, you know, I don't want to be hurtful or anything. What's the point? Just, you shouldn't listen to this. So if you don't want to be depressed, just don't listen to this. Don't even follow me. Just, I just... If I talk like this, I think I could be heard. But I don't really want to, like, drag anybody down. But I can't, like, just sit bottled up and I can't stand it. It's too fucking unbearable, so... What's the point? Just, just turn me off. Anyway, okay, so no one's watching. All right, so you've been warned. Uh, what do I have to say? Just, uh, I have a new ritual. I'm trying to stay on the dating apps, and boy, like, I'm always, I'm a very naive person, and I'm very, like, socially kind of stupid. I, I have a lot of stupid aspects, and just, uh, but particularly in the realm of people. I don't really deal with people very much, except in, like, jujitsu, and that's basically it. And now I'm getting, like, more withdrawn. And just, what's the point? Just, I'm trying to, like, stay on the dating apps. And there, there's such... I'm always trying to figure... Like, what I'm really kind of learning about all the time is I'm learning more and more about this thing. I'm learning about myself. Which is interesting, because I didn't... I don't really know how the world works. And I don't... Like, you know, you. I was kind of born. And over, like, 44 years, I've kind of learned, like, oh, like, this thing is, like, a an animal that's built in with these processes. And sometimes I just think there's kind of like the ego, which is like the personality, that kind of is like, hey, like I'm Sean and stuff. But then there's this like rig, which is built with like a purpose. And I think that is kind of like how things are to some degree. What's your point? <clears throat> yeah, like I think that that is kind of like, what am I trying to say? That is kind of the way I see things sometimes is I just think like, if there was a flower, a flower is like born and the flower blooms and the flower is trying to breed, but I'm not really sure the flower is conscious. I was just listening to some philosophized thing about consciousness. But there's like, beyond a flower, there's like a Venus flytrap and the Venus flytrap is a little more like, it's got like a mouth and it tries to eat things. And then if you go up the chain, there's sort of like more and more like, hey, I'm kind of a, what's the point? I just think like, there's kind of like, with humans, there's this big elaborate sort of personality, but I still think, ultimately, it's underneath it all, there's like a, there's still sort of like a biological thing, like a flower, that's kind of trying to do the same thing as a flower, and it goes through a similar sort of cycle. What's the point? Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to hear this, but uh, that's just what I'm thinking. Headmasters, Transformers. So in the Transformers, they have like the Headmasters. And the headmasters are like, basically they, these things, they sort of come together and they want to like kick ass and do their little mission. But they have this head, there's a head on the headmasters and the head is like, 
like, hey, I'm a headmaster. What's going? I just think that's that's kind of how I see things. Is if I'm sitting here analyzing things, I'm like, oh, like there's a little person that says like, get to the point, John. I just think there's like a little personality that says like, I'm Sean, and uh, gee, this is weird. But underneath it all, there's kind of like ancient animalistic things that have been in play for like a long time, and it's like the rings of a tree, rings of a tree. So if you look at the rings of, I don't know, this is kind of just how I see things. It's just, uh, there's the rings of a tree, right? And so humans, it seems like, I'm trying to just tell what the fuck is going on. And I, I know no one else cares, but I, I'm kind of, I'm just always trying to figure shit out. Just, obviously, it just seems, I don't know, no one's listening, right? There's the rings of a tree, there's the rings of a tree, and the rings of a tree basically are like, there was, we used to be like, humans used to be, they share ancestors with like really primitive life forms. But those primitive life forms, they're programmed trying to do like certain shit. And that shit just basically seems to be like, stay alive and breed. And we were, we have like pr more primitive. This stuff that I'm saying, it's not even like my extrapolation. Like there's this thing like ChatGPT, I don't even have to like pontificate anymore. I can just say it out loud and then the machine will tell me if it's verified by science. Isn't it like verified by science that we're evolved from much more primitive life forms? All the way back up the chain, we evolved and we share ancestors with like flowers, right? And those life forms, they have some like really primitive built in uh, instincts that they're trying to accomplish, whether it's conscious or not. They're built in with things that are trying to stay alive and things that are trying to make them breed. And then they kind of like, die right can you just tell me yes or no as to whether or not that stuff that I said is kind of verified by science and anthropological data yeah so what's the point yes, yes. so basically like, I just have noticed for sure that I'm sort of compelled by these like instincts but those instincts are really kind of like they're not as strong as they used to be Get to the point, John. Basically, I just like, I noticed that like if I open Tinder, there's a lot of like emotional highs and lows. There's just some, there's a big like, when I open Tinder and there's like potential sex, there's potential sex with somebody I'm attracted to. For the, if, if I look at, if I'm basically, if I'm having like a conversation with some woman where I'm like, boy, I'd like to have sex with her and she's like talking to me and it seems like potential sex, for the rest of the day, I feel really good. I feel like just, I feel, I feel better than I normally, like, there's nothing that, like, there's nothing that makes me feel as good as that in terms of, like, a sense of, like, well-being. Just new, get to the point, just, I've noticed that for a long time. Like, I noticed, like, four years ago or something, I went to get, a, I went to get a laser hair removal. And I remember there was this, like, basically, like, a, a, a pretty young woman who, like, felt my face and she felt my hands. I don't go to, like, massage parlors or anything like that but that was like the closest thing I had to like some stranger woman who was kind of pretty that I would have wanted to have sex with and she was physically touching me and I didn't really realize until after I left the place that like my body was like I feel like way better than like I normally feel like there's like a happiness that a man gets I, I'm just gonna go ahead and say I just talk about me but I think it's true for most men because like my brother when my bro I remember very distinctly that like my brother there was this photograph of my brother just a random photo of him in the backyard hanging out with my family when he was having sex with his baby mama he was uncharacteristically happy in a way that's like i'm really happy in like a really way like i'm really happy like life's really good it was so much more really happy than like men just i think that's just a thing that like it happens with dogs too like there's a picture of my nobody's listening right but on my instagram there's this thing with my dog where my dog uh Get the point, Sean. There's a thing with my dog where my dog is playing with this girl dog. My dog, there was a pretty girl dog who was getting my dog to chase him. That's a pretty female dog. And my dog is like, hey, like, you can see it on his face. Like, when my dog is, is chasing this pretty female dog who's potentially can make a baby, he's like, hey, like, life is, like, really good. He's, look at him. He's like, wow. He's, like, really perked up, and he's happy in a way that I don't normally, I don't have any other videos of my dog being that happy and perked up. I do have some, but like basically he's like really happy. And he's like, this is great. Like he's like really like, wow, oh, man, like life is great. 
So what's the point? That's kind of what I noticed too, is I noticed that like times in my life when I felt like really happy, like, gosh, like life is like great. It's usually there's some woman that like I'm attracted to and she's kind of like in my world. And I just think there's no real like, so I don't know. Life is good without that, but there's just kind of like an extra sense of like well-being. And the way I always think of it is basically like, nobody's listening, right? But just feels like I'm always kind of like missing like my appendage. I'm missing like an appendage and I'm trying to find it. And when I find, in the few times that I find some woman that like I can like mate with, I feel like complete for like a little while. But then when we sort of, it kind of always like falls apart or... It's all, it always, it's just, your body is, your body is rigged with these things. It's like humans are kind of like trapped in this game and they're propelled by these feelings and they don't even want to do it. There's like a personality to some degree that's like, I don't even want to be compelled by my feelings. But if you, it feels like if I don't cater to them a little bit, there's like, the feelings are like, I'm going to make you feel really bad. And so it just seems like the sweet spot that I've been able to find is to basically live stream and think that there could potentially be women watching who could potentially like, just there could be women watching, right? But really it's, I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just saying like, I'm, ta I'm always analyzing what is this thing doing? What's the point? It just seems like really it's like kind of like, we'll just say like women could be watching. Just say it, Sean. I have to be like honest. I'm not trying to be mean. I Sometimes I worry that like, sometimes I worry. What do you worry, Sean? I need, I need a place to talk out my honest thoughts. So like, sometimes I worry that like some, like basically I worry that like an older woman could be watching this and I'm like, shit, like I shouldn't say something like, I just feel good around like potential women who could potentially make babies, but I really do. And I just think like older, nobody should watch this, but I need a place to like sort out my own thoughts and just talk to the world. And I'm like, I didn't make up the rules. Like I'm just, I used to be a kid and now I'm, people say all this stuff. People say all this stuff. And then if you just kind of like go along with the stuff, you can suddenly be like, hey, I don't feel good. Like, this isn't right. What's your point? I don't know. I'm just saying, like, I don't know what the hell. I don't know what's what. But basically, I just know that, like, just it just seems like there's a lot of built-in incentives for a human to want to breed. And if I if there's any ability to, like, I have to, like, use those and not let those, like, use me. And that's kind of what I'm doing. So basically, I'm like, I'm just live streaming. And the idea is, like, women who could make babies could potentially watch this. And that makes me do a bunch of show-off stuff. And that feel, gives like a life affirming, like it basically staves away depression. And I'm never going to get with a woman who can like make a baby anymore. And I don't even really want to do that. I don't even really want to have kids, but I have to like cater. That instinct kind of makes me feel good and it makes me do stuff. And I just think a lot of life is basically that. I mean, I just think like fruits and flowers, what's, it just sounds really depressing and it sounds really like, like awful, but that's kind of how it seems to me is basically like there's fruits and flowers and they're trying to spread their seed and they do some stuff in the process of spreading their seed and that's kind of their, I don't know, maybe that's wrong. What's your point? I don't know, but that's basically that's what it feels like. It feels like if I, if I stay on here and I live stream, I'm not going to get laid, but I'll do a bunch of stuff. It'll make me work harder. It'll make me do a bunch of show off stuff that feels good because it's like I'm catering to this like carrot on a stick. But if I actually get the carrot, then I'm like, oh, this is like kind of awful. And what do you want to say, Sean? Just, it seems like particularly like this age, there's just these women on Tinder who just seem like, they just seem to expect to like own your life, which I don't know, people are free to do whatever they want. Like, it just seems like if women have a vagina that men want to put their dick into, they should be able to choose who they want to do that with, of course. And they have a lot of bidders. And so there's this weird thing where like, I'll talk to women and I'll basically be like, hey, like, I want to have sex with you. You want to have sex with me? And they're like, first, like, there's this one woman I'm talking to right now. And she's doing all these, like, kissy, like, she's literally, like, kissing. And she's literally, like, showing her boobs. And she's basically doing all this, like, suggestive sex. And on the thing, it says, I want, like, a relationship open to short relationship. But then when I talk to her, she's like, oh, I'm really just looking for, like, somebody to do activities with and stuff. And it just seems like, I don't know, from the male perspective, if you wanted to go like do jujitsu with somebody, like if I go do jujitsu with somebody, I don't say like, hey, will you do jujitsu with me? And can you like just walk around with me to like the museum? And can you like drive to this place and go hang out with me when I go to this bar? And then can you drive with me to some 
beach and can we go to this thing and can you visit like my parents house that would seem crazy it would seem like if somebody said like I'll only do jujitsu with you if I get to like if you do all the stuff that takes like a ton of time and you have to do all this driving and you have to pay for gas and you have to like that seems like crazy it's like you you want to like own my life in exchange for like jujitsu I just want to do jujitsu and it's weird basically that's kind of what it seems like and then I wonder like why do women even want the company of a man? I understand like having kids. Like I understand if somebody has a kid, well then you have to like raise kids together. And it, it's fucked up because it seems like there's a lot of men who don't even want to do that. It's it's scary how many like single moms there are. There's just, a, it seems like as a broad generalization, if I was to be really honest, to some degree, it just basically seems like men, men want to cater to their breeding instinct, which basically means putting their dick in the vagina of pretty face, big butt, big boobs. They want to just, they have this instinct where it's like, that feels really good. And then women, they seem like they want like somebody to like, they want like a nonstop companion until they're dead, I guess. I don't know, everybody, that sounds so fucked up, but they seem like they kind of want to own you and they want somebody to like, I don't, I don't know why they want that. That's the really weird thing. It's like, why do they want some guy to just be around them all the time I guess people want to get rid of loneliness, but I'm just kind of like, well, why not just do this? Like, why not just kind of live stream all day? Because then you have your freedom. But it just, I feel really bad for the, basically, I do not want to do that. I don't want to get commandeered and just have some woman basic. I've done that before where like, I just am hanging around because I, like, I want vagina and I'm just waiting for a vagina. And then it's like, you got to go to the farmer's market and you got to go to the museum and you got to just pay for this stuff. And I just don't want to do that. And every time I do that, I'm like, dude, that's like so much time and money. And I just don't want to do that. What's your point? Like maybe, like maybe in the future I could see finding somebody who just like, I actually want to spend my time with. But the truth is like, I don't even really want to do that with guys. Like if some guy said, do you want to do all this stuff that takes like a ton of time and money and gas and driving? I'd be like, no, I don't want, it's too much stuff. And so just what's the point? I just basically think it's, it's never going to, I'm just going to die in this room. And so what's the point? I'm just trying to cope with that. And that's all I do is I just talk about that. And that's kind of my social life. It's just just saying like, I guess that's the only thing that's left. Which point? I don't know. There's another thing too where it just, I think to myself like, well, if sex, like uh, four years ago, there was a woman I matched on Tinder and she's just like, yeah, I want to have sex with you and you want to have sex with me. Like I was talking to this lady on Tinder just now and she's like, I said like, she said, like, what are you looking for? And I thought to myself, I really do just kind of want to find somebody where it's like, I want to have sex. I want to find somebody where, like, I want to have sex with them and they want to have sex with me. And that seems like a reasonable thing to try to find because, like, I found that before, like, four years ago. I could go on Tinder and be like, hey, I want to have sex with you. You want to have sex with me? But now it seems like I'm maybe I'm just so old now that it's like nobody just wants sex for sex. They want, like, they'll be like, maybe I'll let you have sex with me, but you got to do all this, like, stuff. And just, that's really, I don't know, I don't want to sound depressing, but that's kind of what my dad, that was what I saw in terms of my dad's life. I mean, really, like, my mom just kind of, she literally, like, really just uses my dad, and it just seems kind of fucked up. What's my point? That's my, my nightmare is just that, that, that defeated middle-aged men get used for their loneliness. There's kind of, like, a thing where, like, increasingly there's kind of like men who become like incel people because men are kind of ugly they're kind of ugly and they're not pretty and nobody wants to like they're like gross and they have big noses and they're unpleasant and so it just seems like there's pretty humans who are basically the women and there's pretty humans who people want to look at and they want to get next to and they want to socialize with and then there's these like ugly older humans who some pretty human is going to come along and be like you're lonely you're alone and you need to do what i say or you're going to be alone and there's these like sad defeated middle-aged men who go i'll do it i'll do whatever you say and i say i'd rather die <laughs> than face that fate. i'll be in here i'll I'm, this is way better than that having witnessed that with my parents i'm like that's a fate worse than death and so what's the point that's my cynical take on it but basically like it just seems crazy. It seems crazy that there's women who just seem like they want to kind of own your life in exchange for like, if so, like so really like okay if you take kids out of the equation like most of the women who are my age they can't even really have kids anymore and so yeah like if somebody just said you want to do jujitsu but when they say do you want to do jujitsu they say you have to like do all this other stuff with me like you have to 
we can't just do jujitsu. You have to like come to my parents' house. You got to go to museums. You got to dr- go to with me to the farmers market. You got to do all this driving. You got to pay for gas. You got to pay for a restaurant. Be like, that's crazy. Like, no, I don't want to do all that. You're asking for like a ton of time and money just in addition to do, do, doing the jujitsu. I don't want it. It's not, it's not worth it. I'll just I'll do jujitsu with my dummy in the room. And I think there's just a lot of men who are gonna come to that conclusion. What's the point? That's kind of one thought about the whole thing. And then the other thought is just like. Like, nobody's listening, right? But I was just singing this song called Crying. There's a lot of songs where people lament about, like, lost love and stuff. But really, like, I have this thing where I constantly say to myself, don't dwell on aging, sex, and death. And I think aging and sex, when you're lamenting about aging and sex, they, they're, you're kind of lamenting the same thing. Like, really, like, if I'm thinking, basically, like, get to the point. Just when I hear that song, there's this song I just sang called Crying. And the guy is saying like, like, oh, like I thought I was over you. Really what that guy's lamenting is he's lamenting kind of like his lost youth. He's like, youth is good. That's the thing. It's like youth is good. And the guy kind of wants to go back to being like a cute guy with like a cute woman. And really like, I think in a lot of cases, that's kind of what people are really like. When they're, when they're lamenting that like ex-girlfriend or those ex-girlfriends that they had in the past, really what they're lamenting is a time when they were young and cute and somebody else was young and cute and they could just have sex without all this other stuff. But now they're in this new period of time in their 40s when everybody is just like a, a single mom and people are all like, ah, oh, like nobody's really attracted to anybody anymore. What's the point? That's kind of how I really think it is. It's just, I think a lot of times there's kind of older people who are, leftover there's older leftover people and they kind of look at each other and they'd be like well it would have been nice to have met you like 10 or 20 years ago but now like what are we going to do together like we're not attractive and you're not attracted to me i'm not really attracted to you but i know that you want like i know that i think that older women they can sometimes find some guy who they will just do all this stuff for them and that's what my mom found my mom found this kind of like defeated middle-aged guy where he's like go do this and go do this and go do this and my dad's like i'll do it i'll do whatever you say and so i think Sometimes older women just hope to find that, but they call it love, but really it's not about, they're not attracted to each other anymore. They just want somebody to like do their stuff. <laughs> they just, that's, they're like, don't you want to like accompany me to all these things that I, that you have no interest in? Doesn't that seem weird? It seems weird. Nobody's listening, right? But that seems really weird that like somebody would say like, don't you want to do all these things with me that you have no interest in? That's what these, that's what some women on dating sites say. They say, don't you want to come with me to old, there's these things that I like to do and I want you to come with them and I know that you're not interested in those. That seems kind of crazy. That seems like kind of an abusive thing. So that's my thinking is like this live stream lifestyle, it's better because I can do all the things that I want to do and somebody can just leave. But if I had a relationship and I was forcing them to like, you have to watch me, you have to hang out with me and sit next to me while I do my dancing and I do my jujitsu that seems really like ridiculous <laughs> so what's point? I just think this is like this is my future life this is basically life and I just think it's kind of better than just getting enslaved or tr- expecting to like just get in like a potato sack with some person where it's like I want to do this you want to do that like why do-? but then neither of us can do what we want to do and we have to do all this like it just I can't see doing that ever again what's the point so yeah, basically, it's just, uh, I'm just going to stay on the date. My goal is to basically stay on the dating apps and just assume that I'm never going to date again and try not to obsess about it and think about it all day long. Yeah, but boy, there's a lot of built-in incentives to want to breed. That's the thing is people are really like, I, I'll say I statements. I'm really like, there's just a lot of biological things that are like connected to like the people's men's body. They really want to have sex with like somebody that they can that just yeah that's it and so that can lead that that can it's a good feeling but that good feeling can cost you your fucking life really yeah but it can make babies too so if you make a baby it's cool but anyway listen to me see i can't even fucking stop talking about it it's really like a drug like potential sex is basically like a drug and you gotta like slap yourself and be like get a grip man yeah anyway Yeah, nobody's listening, right? I'm just gonna keep talking about this. I don't care. No, I don't. I don't even really care. Um, yeah, like I'll go running. Like I'll go running, and it's everybody kind of knows kind of how things are now, especially as like an older person. But even now in this day and age, like the game is like really spelled out, and people kind of just know what's what. 
And so, what's one point? Just when I go, when I went running the other day, there was this kind of like older, uh, this older man who had like a house in the hills, and he was talking with his neighbor. Maybe he was married or something. He's probably married, and he sees me running, and I'm always running around in my tank top, and I'm running around in my tank top, and it's obvious that like, oh, you're still trying to be like attractive. You're still you still want to look. You're not just letting yourself have like a pot belly and stuff like that. And so the guy who has a house and stuff, he probably has a house. He probably has a wife. He has a nice house. And he, as a result of his wealth, he probably has like a wife that he's like basically paying for. And so he kind of like scoffed at me when I was running by his rich house. And he said, ha, ha, keep it up, dude, keep it up. And I'll get that sometimes. I'll do this like running and dancing or whatever. And somebody will scoff at me and be like, ha, ha, keep it up. Like, you're not going to basically saying like, you're doing things wrong. You're not going to get pussy with that. You should like go get a job and pay for some lady to like, to like live with you and accept your penis. And I'm just like, I'm not a fool. Like I know that like, well, maybe I'm a fool, but I'm not a fool in that sense. I know that I could go buy women. I've had that option before. And I was like, it's not fucking worth it. Like I'm thinking like, I will keep it up. At least if I go running, I enjoy my life and I get to do the things I want to do. But I just have to avoid the craving. The craving for sex kind of never goes in any way. But it's not really worth it. And when I see that guy, when I see that guy on the hill with like his mansion and he's doing like tax, whatever his job is, he's doing some like awful shit all day long that's really boring. And then the, he do, if you're doing like 40 hours, if you're doing 40 or 50 hours a week of some shit that you hate, just for 10 or 20 minutes of pleasure with somebody that like, like once people are older, that it's not even really great sex. That's worse. To me, that seems like way worse. It's like, why would you do that? And so I just think like, I just think you're supposed to have a kid. When you're young and cute, you're supposed to have a kid. And then after that, you just pay for the kid. And marriage is probably like a good way to do that. But really like life doesn't really care. And I just think that's kind of like just forces. There's just forces where life is trying to find a way. And when people are young and cute, they're going to breed. And then humans have invented these conventions like alimony checks and marriage and just like come on like you gotta like make it work but i think really honestly with older people it's not really supposed to work and that's my conclusion and so what's my point so yeah basically i'm just i'm gonna stay on the dating apps and i'm just gonna hold out for somebody where it's just like i just want to find somebody where i want to have sex with them they want to have sex with me and they don't expect to like own my life in exchange for like pussy and so what's my point you know I, I may never find that but like but I want to, I, I found it like a year ago. And so I have to just, basically my goal is to like stay on the dating apps, but don't let it like take over my fucking mind. And I failed. I failed just now. I wanted to rant for 10 minutes, but I ranted for 25. Why? Because life is trying to find a way. Like sex, sex is such a pleasurable thing that even just talking about it is addicting. Like I wanted to talk for 10 minutes and my brain is like, just keep just keep talking about sex. It just feels good to even talk about it. So what's the point? You just gotta, it's really like a drug and that drug can like ruin, it can take over your fucking life. How much does a kid cost by the time the kid is 18 in America? $300,000, on average it's like $300,000. So what's the point? Just, it's, it is really good. Like sex is like really good if you're with somebody who can like potentially have a kid that you want to breed with. And it's, it's, it's so good that it, it just, uh, you get what you give. Like it's so, it's that good because it's that fucking like, it's that much work. And I just think it's kind of what makes the world go round to some degree. And I just think those kind of, those things tend to happen when people are young. And then if they, if they did it when they were young, they should marry and stay together, maybe. But then there's this period of time where it's just kind of like, I just think like sexy times are for sexy people. And sexy people are young people. And then after that, it's just kind of like, it's not supposed to work. So anyway, I'm trying to, nobody's listening, right? I'm going to shut up in a second. But I'm trying to basically reassure myself that basically like, there's a good side to this, which is basically like now, I have to really check myself and just say like, okay, like let's assume like whatever you do, Sean, there's not going to be any gratifying sex ever again. Now it's just like, do you want to do the things you want to do? Like, can you just do things just for the joy of doing them? And that's what I'm trying to do is just do stuff and be like, did you enjoy that? Like, did that make you feel good? And if the answer is yes, do that. Just pretend that all you're getting is spending your time and joy from spending your time. And that's it. You're not good. There's no prize anymore. Really? Yeah. So that's kind of what I keep telling myself. It's basically like, just, uh, what do I, what do I get? What do I get? What's the point, Sean? 
just I don't know if anybody's watching this, but sometimes I worry that there could be like an impressionable young man who might watch this and think like, dude, like I should just have fun and just not get a job. No, like, I don't know. You should probably go get a job and you should probably go get pussy. But as a 44 year old man who basically like there's no there's not really any attractive dating options anymore. I keep I've come to this awareness of like, what do I get? Like somebody says like, dude, you're awful. Like you're you're you should grow up. Just grow up, dude. Just go get some job and just. Uh, act like a grown-up and I ask myself what do I get what do I get for acting like a grown-up so this is what I have I have to read this shit every morning just to not throw my life away at some dead-end service job and and shack up with some overweight ethnic girl uh, what do I get what do I get for just acting like a grown-up nothing that I want there's no like good dating options anymore and there's no good jobs anymore so what do I get for act getting acting like a grown-up and uh, and just just acting normal people like just be normal just this is not normal. Just be normal. What do I get? Nothing that I want. What do I get for just doing whatever I want as long as I don't break any laws? I get to do a bunch of stuff that I want. I'm tr just, I'll take that. That's all I expect. What's his name? Uh, Henry Rollins. Henry Lee Rollins said, all you're getting is older. All you're getting, there's no prize. There's, it's for me anyway. There's no prize at the end of the rope. There's no, basically there's no, there's no dream job and there's no attractive spouse anymore. The, the potential for those prizes I think really is in your 20s and 30s and then it's really like diminishing returns because I'm not attractive anymore so what's the point so just I remind myself what do I get what do I get for for just drinking the Kool-Aid in society just doing the typical like life recipe just go get a job there's no fucking good jobs the service job doesn't afford you like a good life and the dating options at 44 are just just single moms and just it's fucking bleak what's the point just if you're young and cute, if you're young and attractive and you're a male, you should probably get a job. You could still get a good spouse and you could still get a good career, but I can't anymore. And that's more and more the case every year. And so I'm thinking like, fuck it, I'm just gonna enjoy myself. So I just wanna do things where it's just like, if just things that make me feel good and I just wanna basically like chase away the doom. I just wanna do things where it's like, let's just get rid of the doom. And so yesterday I got rid of like a lot of doom. Really? Yeah, that's it. That's that's the name of the game from here on out. It's just chase away the doom. But if you're young and you can like breed with somebody that you're attracted to and, and have a family, that's probably worth doing. Maybe. I don't know though. Like my dad, like nobody's listening, right? My dad had kids, right? And I've known a lot of other guys who basically have kids. And there's this time when my dad went to the DMV and he, he took a photo and he looked really sad in his photo. And I remember as a kid asking my dad, like, why do you look so sad in your photo? And he's like, because I don't really have a lot of joy in my life. Like, I'm not, I'm kind of unhappy a lot of the time. And I'm like, well, fuck, like, if having two, my dad had a house and he had two kids and he was like really unhappy. And my mom treated him like shit. Like my mom, even to this day, my mom is just like, you one-eyed fool, go buy this, go buy that. And he's like, I'm just lucky to have her. And it's just fucking like, What's the point? That's the fucking fate. That's the fate of the dorky. The dorky dude, he gets bossed around by the by the fat wench. That's how it goes. Really? Yeah, that's how it fucking goes. And I'll, I'll take the matrix. What's the point? Anyway, that's it. That's the situation. Okay, Sean. Keep talking. Just, you gotta get through this. You gotta, you gotta talk your way into some positive shit. All right, so anyway, shovel out. I got to get rid of the doom. So I'm going to read the sheet. If I read the sheet, it kind of shovels out some of the doom. All right, so what are we doing? Uh, basically, uh, let's say no one's watching this. No one's watching this, or I don't know if anyone's watching this. But I just want to note, there's this, there's this. Tambourine lady in Mary Poppins. This guy. That's that's a trope. That's what fucking happens. The dorky lame guy, he gets bossed around by the fat wench, and that's how it fucking goes. Really? Yeah, that's a meta narrative. That was basically like my dad, and that's a lot of a lot of like lame guys, they get like a fat wench who basically goes, "You fucking fool." And they go, um, uh, what's your point? Uh the the wizard and never-ending story. It's just a tale like that guy. That guy right there. That guy has my genetics. I don't know what that guy is, but that's like a type of human, and I have that genetics. He's got like little monocles, and he's like doing his little thing at his desk. That guy, he ends up with the fat wench. And there, there in the never-ending story, there's this guy like pontificating about like all of his little theories, and there's some like 
fat shrew who basically says, you fool, go take out the garbage. And that's what my dad was. And that's what a lot of, just the dorky lame guy, he's gonna get with like some overweight ethnic chicken, he's gonna get fat wench and it's, it's hell. And they're just, they're just, there's a saying, what is that saying? Uh, you, you sought out security. What did uh, Churchill, Churchill said like, you, you, you wanted peace and you wanted comfort and security and like, and because you, you came to your desire for comfort and security, you get none. Something like that. What, did, what is that quote? I think that basically, I think that's what happens is I think some guy is like, I'm so lonely. And then there's some vulture wench who's like, like, oh yeah, you're lonely. Now I have like some person I can boss around. And then she's like, you'll be alone if you don't do my bidding. That's literally what I saw with my parents. And I just think like the guy should just be strong and just and just fucking die alone. Really, that's what I want to do. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's maybe there's comfort and security with the with the the, the fat wedge or the overweight ethnic chick. Just fucking do what you want. I don't know. But it would be cool to have like a fling with an overweight ethnic chick and not have her like boss you around your whole life. And so that's that's kind of what I maybe if I stay on the dating apps I can get that. What the point? That's how it fucking is. Like that's the nobody's listening, right? I know it's like fucked up, but I need to like keep it real. I'm not trying to. Nobody's watching this. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. But that's the fucking situation. If you don't believe me, I can go into my dating apps and I can show you. It's just single single moms, tattooed single moms, overweight ethnic girl or lady from Asia, and they want your fucking life. But occasionally, you can have like a fling with like somebody like that. And, but just that's as good as it gets and probably I won't even be able to get that anymore okay so that's the fucking situation okay so let's just we've described this situation we've touched on reality now let's just manage my mind really yeah I just want to feel good I want to like let's just think of some shit that'll make me feel good okay so here we go uh, what do you want to say okay so let's say no one's listening or I don't know if anyone's listening uh, so no one else really cares what I think or do but I should really care what I think or do Really? Yeah, what I think or do, it's not really going to affect the world much, but it'll definitely affect how I feel and what I do. So I should generally try to manage my mind and just think shit that makes me feel good and steer my brain away from the, the fucking brutal rocks of reality. <laughs> really? Yeah, there's a lots of negative shit to focus on, but I have to consciously set my mind up in the morning and just try to direct it away from the rocks. Yeah. Okay, so what do you do? Uh, so the, what, I don't know, maybe no one's watching right now. I don't know if anyone's watching. But that's just my imagination. Whatever I speculate about people watching, that's all in my head. There's no, there's no evidence that I have anybody watching me right now. And so I have to just remember that's just my imagination. Really? Yeah, all I know is I know that I'm talking to myself. That's all I really know for sure. And I know that um, I just leave the, the unknowns as I don't know. So what are we doing? So just the facts, just the facts. What are the facts? All right, so just the facts. I leave the, re I, leave the I don't know as I don't know. So from morning till night, or for the rest of my life, I wanna regularly ask myself, hey Sean, what are you doing right now? And then I wanna say to myself, do you wanna be doing that? And then if the answer is no, try to stop doing the things that you don't wanna be doing. Or just, if I do something, I'm like, dude, that was really awful. Try to like not do that again. <laughs> What's the point? Like I just said this like rant. I have to talk about reality every now and then, but what's going on? But basically, I should avoid that. Hey, stop! Dogs out! Dogs out! Out! Basically, if I say a bunch of depressing shit, it usually feels bad afterwards. <laughs> Let's try to like not do that again. But I gotta fucking talk out my bullshit. Anyway, okay. So what? So basically, I should just say like, Hey, Sean, what are you doing right now? And then, what did you? Did you like that? Do you want to be doing that? If the answer is no, try to stop doing that or don't do it again. And then uh, try to say, hey, what do you want to do? And then just try to do that at whatever lame level you can do it. Really, that's kind of all I want to do is just like think, what do I want to do? How can I get myself to do it at whatever level I can do it? And just, did I like it? Do I feel good? Then do that. Just that. But I don't want to get roped into a bunch of things that I don't want to do because that's not good. <laughs> really, yeah. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, 
hey, uh, if you if I can't even attempt to do what I want, I should just go to sleep. That's a red flag. Let your conscience be your guide. Leave the I don't know says I don't know. Ask ChatGPT or credible sources for answers. Um, what do I know? Well, I do know that there's sights and sounds going into my eyes and ears and turning into thoughts and actions. So, I don't know, maybe there's a God and stuff. Who knows? But there's a lot of things I don't know. But what I do know is the sights and sounds, there seem to be sights and sounds going into my eyes and ears. And I know what I want to think and what I want to do. And I just want to try to deal with that, mostly. Um, racist and misogynist is as racist and misogynist does. Um, right, so if you if you don't if I want to be a racist or misogynist, I shouldn't say racist or misogynist stuff. I'm not trying to be a teacher. I'm just trying to lead myself. Uh, why do it publicly? Because I get off on it. Uh, because it, it's just I got to get rid of loneliness. Basically, I have to get rid of loneliness, and so I just keep thinking like, isn't everybody doing this? Like, how do you how do you not do this? How do you just sit in a room in silence forever, or just fucking let some that wench take over your fucking life. That's what my dad did. It's fucking horrible. Really, yeah, it's a fate worse than death. I'll take this. Uh, sustainable, enjoyable grind. What's your point? Don't say misogynistic stuff. That's how it fucking is. Like, I'm not trying to be a misogynist, but I'm just saying that, like, if I could just show you, like, the reality on my dating apps, that's how it fucking is. And that's, like, I'm kind of saying, like, to the world, like, isn't that, like, how everybody else is? Like, right, that's the fucking rules now. It's like, the game is, like, locked up. There's no... Like, there used to, nobody's listening, right? But you used to be able to find, like, a diamond in the rough. It, back, like, 10 years ago, before people knew what everybody really thought, you could kind of find somebody who didn't really know stuff. Like, you could find somebody, they didn't really know what they, what they could get. They didn't know their, like, market value. And now everything's just fucking, like, market value is ironclad. You're not going to, like, get around it. And so what's my point? Just the fuck, basically, like, Get the point, Sean. Just, it seems to be the case. It seems to be the case that the fucking rules are if you're like an older dude, if you go onto the dating apps, if she's like a hot chick, she's gonna want like a lot of money. Otherwise, she, she'd just be with some other young hot person. And then uh, the options are like single mom. Single mom usually has a tattoo for some reason. And then, uh, don't talk about this, Sean. And then like, just fucking overweight ethnic girls and just there's tons of them I don't explain it it's I could show you if I could show you my phone I don't want to reveal per people's identity but it's always it's nothing it's all overweight ethnic girls and ladies from Asia and it's the same type of pe like it's like I'm not trying to overgeneralize but there's this Asian lady who looks kind of like an alien and she shows herself with in front of like a horse stable or something like that or there's some columns and like hedges and stuff she shows like a nice like pretty background and she has like nice jockey clothing or something and she looks like an alien and there's thousands of them there's thousands of them on, on my dating house and then there's this overweight ethnic girl who's like it's they're so they're all overweight ethnic girls like it's all overweight ethnic girl single mom or that lady from asia across the board and then every once in a while some like basically hot basically a hot a, a young hot white chick who's kind of like you have to like pay for me and she's waiting for me to like say like i'll give you all my money and then she's that's kind of her life plan is like to find some like older guy to like pay for and the game is like locked up and you're not gonna like i've been doing this for like four years there's no way around that there's no like diamond in the rough anymore but like 10 years ago you could find like a diamond in the rough you could find some like basically hot chick who was just kind of like she had like a drug problem and she was like oh i don't know like i guess you're kind of cool but now that woman is going to like, she's going to get her, she's going to get what she can get. And she can, she knows her options because nobody even like socializes. Nobody like does things randomly anymore. They just are going to go onto the market and find their value and they're going to get what they can get. And what's the point? Just basically my time is not, my time is more valuable to me than I can get in exchange for it. And there's no way around that anymore. And so I just have to like please myself. And so let's just keep doing that. And so when I use the, my goal is like when I use the dating apps, I have to minimize the amount of time that I obsess over it. And I have to get better at that. And it's hard, it's hard. The, the fucking, the, the gravity of the vagina on like your brain. Just having open dating apps is like, it's like 
sucking my brain and just being like pussy potential pussy but it's it's never it's never worth it anymore really yeah, it's just it's not really possible anymore anyway case closed okay so i'm just going to use the i'm going to use the the force of potential pussy to get myself to show off and do some workout and that's as good as it gets use the force of potential pussy don't let the pussy use you <laughs> yeah okay what else uh, sustainable enjoyable grind so make it fun don't make it unnecessarily awful whatever works keep it simple whatever works uh right so don't make things unnecessarily awful so anyway now that i've like said this like 50 million times i shouldn't have to say it anymore yeah but that's that's what's on my mind no one cares yeah i don't i don't even want to talk about it anymore let's try to not say this shit anymore um okay so don't corrupt the youth yeah no one's watching this but if somebody's watching this just get a job and go go get a wife and you know money money pussy that's that's what you should go get when you're get it while you're young uh king keys to the kingdom good to remember who has the keys to the kingdom uh avoid alcohol oh god i feel sick i feel sick no one cares uh no soul mantra what's the no soul mantra uh in a world where everything is constantly changing and interconnected the only thing that makes anything seems i got a mosquito bite uh, the only thing that makes anything seem separate or stable is a word. A word creates an imaginary border around what is otherwise a constantly flowing, interconnected everything. What does that shit mean? It just means I don't think there's a soul. I think there's I think there's just words, and words make entities out of stuff that you could otherwise think of as multiple things or part of a greater whole. But I don't think there's a soul. It doesn't seem like there's a soul because like if you get brain damage, what happened to your soul? And if you die and you go to heaven. What happened to your soul? Like, does the brain damage version go to heaven? Or does the five-year-old version go to heaven? What's the point? It just seems like it comes from a word. It seems like people think in terms of words. And uh, it's not that word. The, the thing isn't just a word. What's the point? I want to go kill this mosquito. Maybe I should just spend the morning killing this mosquito. There's a mosquito somewhere in my room. And I want to just kill it. Let me just spend a minute trying to find this fucking mosquito. Let's find a mosquito. Okay, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, there's no, I don't think there's a soul. But I don't know, when I listen to Joel Osteen, I'm going to think there's a soul. But right now, I don't think there's a soul. 
and that makes the world make more sense to me because um because if i think there's a soul then i start to think like like what's my nature or just i don't know it just seems like shit fucking changes and the idea of a soul kind of muddies with that what's the point also it just makes me think like well what happens to you if you die like if you think there's a soul now you have this thing where it's like well where do i go when i die like am i going to go into infinite blackness and i just think there's not a you there's not like a you there's just fucking there's kind of shit happening what's more i just think there's sights and sounds going into eyes and ears and turning into thoughts and actions and there doesn't have to be like a you there's no like there's no ghost in the machine. And the the thing that you think of as you is really obviously like, it's it's interconnected with its surroundings. Like if you had different sights and sounds going into your eyes and ears, you would be saying totally different shit. Like I didn't make up any of these words that I'm saying. What's the point? I just think that that seems like obvious. And so I'm trying to tell myself that just, I just think that, that people are more interconnected with their surroundings than the words suggest. The words suggest that people are these little bubble entities and so I'm just like I think you guys are all ridiculous I think I think talking about some person as though they're they're this separate thing that's not interconnected with its surroundings that goes somewhere when they die that seems just ridiculous and it seems like it's a function of words it seems like my mom said you're Sean now she says that's you you are this person who's like driving the car of your brain it doesn't make it doesn't I don't think there has to be a you I think there's just there's just sights and sounds going, like before my parents told me there was a me, there was just sights and sounds going to my eyes and ears and turning into thoughts and actions. And now I just think with all these, with all this talking, there's just more elaborate versions of that. And I, but I think when somebody says, well, what happens to me when I die? The mistake is thinking that there's some sort of like separate me. I was listening to that yesterday. There was a thing on Philosophize podcast where they, there's philosophy podcasts where they said like, like they think that there's like, the material world and then there's some sort of like non-material world of like the spirit world and i think that comes from words because words are not like real things words are kind of like imagined things and so they make this mistake of thinking there's a you and then they think the you is some sort of separate soul thing and i think it's just the reason they can't find a you is because it's a word the you is a word but what you're talking about when you say you is basically shit that's kind of interconnected with its surroundings and it's changing and just that's the way things seem to me so i'm just saying that because i'm gonna listen to all this shit and people are gonna confuse me and i'll be like that's the way it seems to me but when i listen to joel osteen i'll believe his shit and i think there's just thoughts i think there's thoughts and so like there's the physical real world and then there's like a lot of thoughts about that world but the thoughts aren't really real but the thoughts make you feel and do stuff and so i just generally want to try to think and do stuff that i want yeah, that's it. So I don't know, there's sights and sounds coming into my eyes and ears and I wanna remind myself that I can make my own sights and sounds. And that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing this morning is I can like leave it to chance. I can just let the thoughts just kind of randomly float in my head or I can just like create my own thoughts. Like right now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm creating my own thoughts with my tongue. I'm creating my own sights and sounds and thoughts rather than just leaving it like willy nilly. And that seems, it seems crazy to do otherwise. Like basically if I read this thing, I've got a bunch of thoughts in my head that make me feel good for pretty much the rest of the day, or they give me ways to counter the negative thoughts. And if I don't do that, like how would I think otherwise? Like how would I just, how would I expect to just randomly just stumble into like good thoughts? You're gonna stumble into some bad thoughts. And if, if you're not like armed with some way to counter those thoughts, cause you forgot how to counter them, you're gonna sit with some bad thoughts. And I just seem like that's kind of seems like all this. That's kind of what seems to be happening in my world. And this, I don't know, yeah. Anyway, but there's other shit too. Uh, whatever, don't don't fall for superstition. What does that mean? Yeah, just if I start doing some superstitious shit, I'm just gonna do the opposite just to counter it and just be like, ah, it's just fucking superstition. That's what. Uh, yeah, when in doubt, relax, breathe, and let things pass by without judgment and just let somebody else figure it out. Really, yeah, just... I'm going to say a bunch of shit that's going to make sense, but sometimes I'm just going to be like, I don't know, whatever, just, I'm just going to relax, breathe, some shit happened, somebody said some stuff, I said some stuff, maybe it's all bullshit, just whatever, somebody else will figure it out, I'm going to just, in the meantime, I'm going to relax, breathe, and let things pass by without judgment, that's a good default, okay, what else, uh, so you're not your thoughts, 
the world is not your thoughts and your feelings, and we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Yeah. Which point? Uh, right, so I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a mind reader. What do you mean, Sean? Well, I got this little sheet that I read every day, and I remind myself that uh, the world is not words. Thinking in terms of words creates some problems, because for one thing, it makes you think that it's just one thing, but it's not just one thing, it's many things. And uh, what's the point, Sean? Yeah, basically, um, the world is not words, so there's always a positive counter thought I can think, and it's not just one thing. Whatever I think of as one thing, it's not just that thing. That the word is going to suggest you're just a this or it's just that. It's not just that. Like there's multiple interpretations, and so I should consciously try to think of three positive interpretations if I want to feel good. About, there's a way to feel good about that thing, or there's a way to feel good about myself. And if I just consciously try to think three positive things about myself, if I feel bad about, if I think I'm bad, just uh, try to think about three ways in which you're good. And I can always do that. Those, the ways to think of it as good are always available, but it takes work to like shovel out the random interpretation. So at some point, just there's, on an ongoing basis, there's every day, there's gonna be a voice in my head or a voice from the outside world that says something to the effect of you're bad and that thing you're doing is bad or that other person is bad. And I, it's not just bad. There's a way to think of it as good, but I have to like think of it. So if somebody says like, I think you're a jerk, you say, yeah, but you probably also think I'm tall. You probably also think I have a good head of hair. You probably also think I'm good at art. You're just not saying those. So the, wor the, wor the world doesn't just have one interpretation. There's lots of things you could focus on, but in a competitive world, people are usually gonna provide various versions of you're bad and that thing you're doing is bad. And just any one of those can like make me feel bad for like whole day. I'm like, wait a minute. It's not just that. So there's there's good stuff too. And that's the whole thing. It's basically people are mixed bags. So the same thing applies for other people. Like if I think about some other person, I'll be like, oh, they're just an asshole. They're not just an asshole. There's good stuff about them too. And I'm gonna try to focus on the good stuff for everybody. It's, I'm not just, I know that they're not just this. They're not just like this bad thing. There's something bad about everybody and I can sit with that or I can just think like, oh yeah, there's good stuff about them too. So I'm going to always remember that there's there's like three positive counter thoughts to any of the negative thoughts and I just have to do the work and I have to just, I mean I don't have to, but if, other, if I don't do the work, I'm just sit with a negative thought and so I'll just try it. If I want to feel good about, th there's a way to think of that thing is good or that person is good or that activity is good and if I do that, then I'll feel good because it's not absolutely good or bad. Also, that thing can be thought of as multiple things. So a person is really multiple things. They're not one thing all the time. So if somebody says like, are you an artist? I don't know, not all the time necessarily. Sometimes, uh, sometimes I do some art. If somebody says like, you should do physical stuff. I do that too, I do that too. Some things are not mutually exclusive. Sometimes you can do the other thing later. Um, people are mixed bags over time. They do all sorts of shit and so the shit changes. Like I should remember that like my interpretation is going to change over time. So if I'm, there's going to be some days where I just have like a bunch of negative interpretations and they're just festering on my mind. That seems to be the, basically the way my brain works is there's some like little scrabble letters. There's scrabble letters that I'm using to interpret the world. And it's kind of usually like the same world. <laughs> I mean, and I'm like, dude, I thought it was good, but now I think it's bad. And then I'm like, well, I thought it was good before. I'll, I'll see it as a good again later. But right now, the things in my lo the things loaded in my recent memory are a bunch of negative interpretations. And I'm just gonna have to sit with those and, and those are gonna taint my analysis of life. And then I'll forget. I'll forget about the negative thing and then I'll, I'll be like, wait, like it's actually good. And they'll be like, yeah, it's good. It's not really good or bad. You just have some words that you're using that are lingering in your head that you're thinking about and analyzing the world with and those change. And so I can either like try to change those by thinking about the good stuff or just know that like when I go to sleep after a few days, I'll see it as good later. The, in the interpretation will change over time depending on the, the recent words that have floated into my brain. And sometimes there'll just be so many negative words coming into my head and they'll linger in my memory for like the whole day that I'm probably just gonna feel bad for like the whole day or like a few days. They'll pass, they'll pass. I know how this goes. It's like three days later, I'll be like, hey, it's not, it's good. Now I'll, I'll analyze it. I'll come up with, I'll remember more ways in which it's good. And that's just, that's like an ongoing thing. Okay. So what else? But it's not like absolutely good or bad. <sighs> what else? Um, but there's always ways to think of the good. There's always ways to think of the bad. And you can like consciously do that. 
But if you deal with other people, they're gonna they're gonna provide various versions of you're bad, and you're like I thought it was bad, but now I think it's good. It's not absolutely good or bad. Oh, uh, what else? Uh, mind reading. So I'm not a mind reader. So uh, I should remind myself that if I start tripping out thinking those people are thinking this and that, that's always just me thinking shit. Um, but I ultimately I'm not a mind reader. I'm also not a fortune teller. What does that mean? So if I start tripping out thinking like I know this thing in the future is going to be bad. I don't know the future, so I should assume that that person is thinking something good and that thing in the future is good until I know the facts because my brain is usually going to fill in the blank with uh, something bad and that's just my imagination. I'm not a fortune teller, I'm not a mind reader. Uh, catastrophize, don't catastrophize. So if I start tripping out thinking like, oh, like, I I have a tumor. It's a th that thing on Google Image. It's, it's like the thing on my foot. It's probably a tumor. It's not a tumor. You're just tripping out. I'm always kind of tripping, especially if I'm tired or emotionally overwhelmed. Just go to sleep, get more sleep, and then in the morning, just talk to an expert before you jump to conclusion. What else? Emotional reasoning. I'm, my emotion's not the truth, so uh, try not to make emotional decisions. Labels, what's that? Uh, stupid is as stupid does. Criminal is as criminal does. So if I commit a crime, I'm not permanently a criminal, but if I do some good thing, I'm not permanently a good guy either. You just gotta keep doing shit. You're not permanently a thing. You can just do shit, but if you don't even try to do the thing because you think that you're a thing, that's a pain in the ass. So if, if I commit a crime and then I try to be a good person, says, don't try to be a good person, you know you're just a criminal, and you go, they're right, who am I? Who am I to do a good thing? I'm just a criminal. No, you're not a fucking label. Like, you can just do whatever you can physically do. It doesn't have to have anything to do with what you previously did. But if you want to be a thing, you got to keep doing that thing. So if you want to be an artist, you got to keep doing art. You're not an artist by default. If you want to be a good guy, you got to keep doing good stuff. You're not a good guy by default. But just do shit. Do shit. But like, you can just do whatever you can physically do. And then if you can't do that thing that you can physically do, I'm not sure you can really be blamed for it. Really? Yeah, I like that idea too. It's just basically like, you should just, if somebody says like you're a bad thing, or if that voice in your head says, you're a, you're just a, you're just an asshole. And you go, oh no, am I an asshole? How do I know if I'm really an asshole? Can I change? Can I change from being an asshole? And if the voice or the other person says, no, once an asshole, always an asshole. You'd be like, well, then how can I be blamed for it? I can't change. I was born that way. That's just my nature. It's like calling a retarded person retarded. How can you, uh, how can you beat yourself up for it if you can't even change? How can it be? It's, you can't be blamed for it if you can't change. But then if somebody says, well, no, you could change. Well, then I'm just acting. I'm just acting, but I'll change later. Either you can change, in which case it's all good. You can change later and you're just acting. You're not permanently that thing. But if you're permanently that thing and there's nothing you can do about it, then you shouldn't beat yourself up and you can't even really be blamed for it because you can't do shit about it. So in either case, I think it's good to just not really fret about it. Really? Yeah. And then uh, what else? Uh, Personalization, what does that mean? Uh, so yeah, it's, I think it's good to not have regret. So isn't it true that a lot of uh, the top scientists say that there's probably no free will and me and all the other people probably couldn't have chosen any differently than what they did? Don't a lot of the smartest people studying that subject think that that, that could likely be true? Yes. yes. But isn't it also true that a lot of the top scientists, they think that you, you, you could have free will and maybe you really could choose different than what you did? Yes. yes. So different, that's, I'm always trying to remind myself, different people think different shit and those people, they also think different shit. Like they didn't, they weren't born thinking any of these things. And ultimately, it's just fucking thoughts. There's just physical reality. I love that idea. There's just there's physical reality, and then there's like a bunch of like, should I have done different? Like, was that God's will? Maybe I should have done different. That's good. That's bad. Yeah, yeah. That's like a lot of like blah 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 blah. But the blah 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 doesn't really change like the physical reality. So that shit in the past, you can like think about it however you want. It's not gonna change what the fuck happened, but it'll change how you feel. So like different people think different shit, and they didn't always think that shit. So you can also think like different shit. You can think different shit at different times. That person who thinks there's free will, it doesn't like really matter what they think in terms of like that's what fucking happened. But it affects how you feel. So you should just think the shit that like makes you feel good and not depressed. But then you can switch. You can switch. If somebody says, like, are you a determinist? Or are you a free will believer? Or are you a Christian? I don't know, not all the time. Can I change? Can I switch to your philosophy? Yeah, if you switch to my philosophy, your whole life would be different. Okay, well I change for a while, but then I'm gonna switch the other way. And they might say like, no, no, you can't switch that fast. It's just thoughts, like they just think there's basically thoughts running through your head, 
and you can just think the shit that makes you I think you should just think the, sh the right shit for the right effect like you should just think the thing that makes you not be depressed or think the thing that makes you motivated or think the thing that like just uh just whatever philosophy fucking works. So what's the point? So just like when I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to be thinking like there's definitely a God and I'm definitely going to heaven. But right now I think like, oh, I don't, don't really think there's a God. And you can just switch. And it's easier to switch again if you don't think that you're a thing. And so I think there's just habits of like thought and action. And I like to remember that like it's easier to think different shit and do different shit if you remember that you're not like a label. So I'm not like a determinist. I'm not a believer. When I listen to Joel Osteen, I'm a believer. I'm going to believe in God. I'm gonna, if, how many times do you have to pray to God to like officially be a believer? There's no like official designation. It's just thoughts. Really? Yeah, I don't even have to. Like I can, it's not even just me saying this shit. Like in terms of being like officially a believer in God, there's no like official designation. You can't like analyze somebody's cells and tell that they really are a believer or not. I mean like really like if you pray to God and you you talk to God and you think about going to heaven and you think all that stuff related to the Bible, that's kind of like believing in God and being a Christian, right? I mean, that's that's kind of what thinking is. It's like there's some thoughts going through your head, but there's no way to measure like when whether you're like a you know, an official believer in God or something like that because you weren't always that. It's just kind of thoughts going through your head. Is that true? Yeah. That's, That's correct. correct. It's just thoughts. There's just like a bunch of thoughts. And if you have like a lot of thoughts that precede the other thoughts and you think those on a regular basis and you say something like, I believe that, that's it. That's just, that's as thinking as it gets. And like, I just think it's just habits. It's just habits of thoughts. And so I want to be flexible in my habits and just be like, I don't know, sometimes I believe in God if that's useful. And basically if it's in the past and if, if I'm beating myself up, I say, ah, there's no free will. I forgive myself. We probably... A lot of the top scientists, they say there's probably no free will. And so I forgive myself. I forgive that other person. But then when I think about the future, there's free will. I change my mind. I'm a free will believer. So you can just, I think it's just thoughts. You should use the appropriate thought for the appropriate effect. Yeah, you can do that. Because you didn't, none of those people, they didn't always think that shit. And the, the thoughts are going to change. And you can just like keep thinking, keep thinking like new shit. But you don't control the field. And so eventually somebody will say, no, 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 that's not how it is. And then you'll be like, oh, maybe they're right. They're not right. They didn't think that shit all the time either. What's more, it's just fucking thoughts. It's just thoughts. You should just run the thoughts through your head on a regular basis that like make you feel good. And occasionally you'll encounter some other people who say, no, it's some different shit. It's fucking, that's not true. And then you go, oh, maybe you're right. But really like people think different shit. Like that's Jordan Peterson thinks one thing. Sam Harris thinks some other thing. So you too could all... Just the fact that different people think different shit means that you can also think different shit at different times. So what's my point? It's just fucking thoughts. It's just fucking thoughts. The thoughts don't change like the physical reality, but they do change how you feel and what you do. So I think you should just think the shit that makes you feel good and does good stuff. So whatever the, whatever thought works for the fucking... For the right situation. Yeah. Okay, so what else? Uh, so overgeneralizing... Uh, so if I think like everybody sucks or like I always do that bad thing, um, I, it doesn't fit into that neat little package. It's not that simple. So if I start thinking like everybody sucks or I always do that bad thing, if I think about it, sometimes I do some good stuff and it's good to recalibrate. It's good to remember. Uh, uh, what else? Just I want to think about the positive. So I want to recalibrate and remember what are three things I'm grateful for? If I'm focused on like what I don't have, I'll be like, I lack these things. Like, I don't have, like, a good job. I don't have a good girlfriend. <laughs> and so what's the point? I'll be like, I, my life is terrible. But really, if I think about it, I have no cancer, and I'm not starving, and I have all my limbs. I win already. I have the best stuff already. Having no cancer and having all your limbs and not starving is, like, the best. I'll take that over a uh, dream job or dream girlfriend. <laughs> really? Yeah, I have the best stuff already. Anything else is bonus. Uh, what else? Yeah, that's basically it. Um... Uh, Fucking mosquito bite. Fucking mosquito bite. Anyway, uh, what else? Uh, should. Don't get caught in other people's shoulds. What does that mean? So yeah, I've got to remind myself that the darkest times in my life are usually times when I can't get myself to do the shit that I want to do. I just want to like write down, like, this is what I want to do with my day. And if I can't even do it, that's a real pain in the ass. And so I just want to think the shit 
that makes me do what I want to do. And so some of the darkest times in my life are when somebody basically says like, you shouldn't do that thing that you want to do. You should do something that like serves my interests or confirms my way of life. And I'll, if I go, they're right, I should do what you say, what I'm doing. Basically, people are going to try to say like, you should do what serves them. And if I do that, it's fucking misery. And if I start to load my day with a bunch of shit that I don't want to do, and I'm like, dude, how did I get roped into this shit that I don't want to do? It's because somebody said, you should do this thing that like, I say you should do. And usually that's because that person wants money or they want, uh, they just, you're doing something that doesn't confirm their way of life and they don't really care. They're just going to try to, they just want what they want. People want what they want. And if you let them, they'll fucking eat you if they can. But just, you got to just be like, I got to protect my time because uh, you don't get your time back. And so the biggest regret, the biggest regret of people on their deathbed is getting roped into other people's stuff and siphoning away their time on some shit that some other person said they should do. Can you substantiate that? Isn't it the the number one regret of people on their deathbed is living according to other people's desires or other people's expectations? Yeah. Yes. yes. Very, very easy to have that happen. It's, I've had that happen a lot in my life. It's suddenly somebody says, you're bad. Basically, there's an ongoing thing where somebody's somebody's going to say, you're bad, and that thing you're doing is bad, and they're saying, you should do this other thing. And then if I do that, I'm just like, dude, like I just lost like a year of my life. And I'm like, dude, I don't even like this. How did this happen? Oh, this person said, like, you're wrong, and you're bad, and you should go do this thing that I say you should do. And I'll be like, okay. And then it's like, dude, like you don't get your fucking time back. They don't even care either. What's the point? Yeah, what's the point? Uh, yeah, it's basically it. You don't get your time back. Uh, what else? Uh, three to ten. So basically, for the rest of my life, I just want to say, like, what do I want to do? And how can I do it? And there's some lame level I can do it at. And I want to not compare. Really? Yeah, so there's an ongoing thing where, like, if I, if I compare to some level way higher, that might make me think of my thing as bad. And so I have to think of my thing as good. And I have to think of it. There's a way to think of it as good. But a way to think of it as bad is comparing. So, like... There's infinite comparisons. Even those people who are really good at something, there's some way they could compare to something further along or better that makes them feel pathetically bad. Just don't compare to them yet. Don't don't ever just, if there was like a dung beetle, if there was a dung beetle working on his little dung pile and suddenly he realized how insignificant his life was compared to like some guy who's like in like a penthouse apartment with a bunch of supermodels, if he suddenly, if the dung, if the guy with the penthouse said, "Dude, your life is so pathetic. Like you're just rolling this little dung beetle in the cracks of the New York City streets," the dung beetle he doesn't even know that shit. But if he knew that, he might be like, "Dude, my life is so insignificant. I should just kill myself." No, that's your life. Like that's you really love that. Like that's what you want to do, right? That's your life. But there's there's a version of that for everybody. Like if all these people doing their things, just give it like. 300 years and if they compare themselves to like genetically engineered people or artificially intelligent people it's all going to seem like dung beetle stuff but that's your fucking dung beetle and to that dung beetle he's going to have some little magic in his life he's going to watch the sunset he's going to be like I made my fucking dung heap and I feel proud of myself and the other dung beetles will be like dude that was fucking awesome it is awesome but if you compare there's some way to compare that will make you feel like oh it's so insignificant just don't compare to that that's not your life that's not the lot you were given just you just want to all we have to do is decide what the time do with the time we're given and there's a way to think of it as good but there's lots of ways to think of it as bad and one way to think of it as bad is comparing and just don't compare don't compare to that that's that's not your lot that's not your mission <laughs> yeah okay what else uh, assertion so people are going to assert superiority somebody's going to say something to the effect of like you you're just a passenger i'm a driver and you should be, you shouldn't be like they're right. Who am I? Who am I to be a, pa a driver? I'm just a passionate. But wait a minute. Like, I, if I want to drive, I'm going to drive. But it's just people are going to assert superiority, but don't let them relegate you to to not. You have the same freedoms as them. So you can still, like, do whatever you can physically do and that you can legally do. And if you want to do that, you should do it. Don't think that you don't have the same freedoms as them. What else? Emerson. So just do it bad. There's going to be some version of, like, uh, you're bad. Last resort, like, there's a way to think of that thing you're doing as good, but then last resort is just do it bad, do it bad. Who says you have to do it good? Just do it lame, do it old, do it pathetic, but do what you want to do. There's some lame level I can do it at, and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to try to think of it as good by thinking, like, well, it's better than what I did yesterday or last year. But if if the voice eventually says, just you're bad, well, then I guess I'm bad, but I'm doing what I want to do, and so 
Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, just do that. Who says you have to be good at something to do it? If you enjoy it, then it's good because you enjoy it and it's what you want to do. But there's always a way to think of it as bad. But just try to think of it as good, but then last resort, just do it bad. Do it lame, do it do it at whatever level you can do it, but do what you want. Uh, what else? Or not, I don't know, whatever, that's what I want to do. Uh, even if it's a, even if I'm a bad thing, it's better to be a bad thing doing that good thing than just being the bad thing. So even if that voice says like you're bad, just be like, well, if I'm some bad thing, Let's be that plus doing the good activity. That's better than just being the bad thing. So let's let's be a. I don't know what the fuck I am, but if that voice says like you're a bad thing, okay, but let's be a bad thing doing the the trying hard thing that potentially makes my life better and brings me joy. That's better than just being the bad thing and not doing that shit. So let's just, just do the fucking thing. Yeah. Uh, what else? Shit. Uh, happy accidents can be good. Don't go nuts. Uh, sometimes shit's not gonna be perfect. I'm having like a bad day today because. Because uh, there's nothing but overweight ethnic chicks and single moms on my dating app. And it's, fuck it, it's always the same lady from Asia. It's just an, it's so many, like, nobody's listening. Right? Just the whole fucking, if you're like a washed up middle-aged, you're not just a washed up middle-aged, I know, but just like for the last like four years, just the dating options are just single mom. This, It's the same type of people. Single mom, lady from Asia, who's like, she has the same background. It's the same background, the same clothing. It's really weird. And then uh, overweight ethnic girl, and it's the same type of overweight ethnic girl. Really, it's just a fucking, that's how it is. That's my life now. What's, it's not your life. It's, that's the dating world. So just stay off the dating apps and just enjoy your life and just expect that there's no more, uh, no more good dating options. Really? It happens eventually to everybody. Okay. Just... Uh, Sexy times are for sexy people. Sexy people are in their 20s and 30s. And when you're in that time, you should get married because it's not it's it's not fun being a 40-something at the singles bar. Yeah. So just try to avoid the singles bar too much. Huh? Uh, okay, what? Let's change the channel. So you can always change the channel. Um, battle against chaos. So I want to remind myself that the world is kind of like a battle against chaos. Uh, I have these various kites of sandcastles. I'm working on my jujitsu. I'm, I'm trying to maintain a jujitsu habit. I want to keep going to jujitsu, which is kind of hard for me to do. I want to go running regularly. I want to do sculpture, which is kind of hard for me to do. And then I want to do maintain my drawing skills. And I want to work out. All of these things, just assume the world's going to try to disperse them. The world's going to call like, ah, come on, it's too hard. That was yesterday. We should just give up. Like, ah, come on, I forget my goal. No, stick to your fucking thing. And if you can grind away at your thing for like a year or like five years, you could get to the next level of your video game just for a spirit of adventure. And if you stick to your thing, if you grind away at your thing, over the days or over the weeks, you're going to have like down days, you're going to have down weeks. Things are going to be sort of like not so good. Stick to your fucking thing. Do it at whatever level you can do it. And if you check back on your progress after like a year, you'll, you'll progress, especially if you're genetically talented at the thing. But even if you're not, like you can get you can get better at your thing if you grind away for like a long time. But if you keep changing and if you just quit after a few days, you don't really get to the next level of your thing. So it's nice to just to get to it's for a feeling of progress. It's nice to kind of like have these snowballs and keep rolling your snowball through the ups and downs. Don't jump ship. Just pick a few stocks and stick with them for like 30 years. You can diversify or you can go all in on the thing that you're talented at. But if you keep rolling your snowball for like 30 years, you could have a really good thing. And why try to make your thing better? I don't know. Might as well try to make your thing better. Why? Because better is better than worse. Or I try to do anything. I don't know. Might as well try to make your thing better. Why? Because better is better than worse. Really? Yeah. So even if you quit, if you put your snowball down for a while and it starts to melt and somebody says, ah, you're a quitter. You're not a quitter. You can always get back on the horse. And uh, you're never out of the fight. Uh, what else? until you're dead but as long as you have breath to breathe you can do what you all we have to do is to type you can keep doing your thing as long as you're alive uh what else the more you do a thing the more you can do that thing if you want to win you should probably go all in if you want to just play you can do different things throughout the day when in doubt avoid unnecessary conflict really yeah every day i use that every day i'll see some person and i'll be like fuck that guy he's not getting the better of me don't care don't want to care just be like just just do the thing that avoids unnecessary conflict. Uh, keep it simple. Yeah, avoid being a drama queen. Don't make things super serious or a big deal. Anything in life that you've recently regarded as bad. Yeah, just uh, it seems like I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna get laid with anybody that I'm attracted to ever again because I'm an old person. What's the point? What are three ways in which that could be a good thing? 
well, I don't have to think, I can do things just for the joy of it. So I can live kind of like a kid without having everything be corrupted by like potential pussy. Let's just say whatever I do, I'm just getting older. And so I should just do things for the joy rather than be like, oh, maybe this will get pussy. Yeah, what else is good? Just, I don't know. Um, yeah, also like, you won't have to pay for kids. Kids can be very expensive. What else? And you won't have to do all that driving. You don't have to drive to that place. You don't have to go to that event. You get your freedom. Really? Yeah. And you can jerk off to super hot chicks on your phone until you're dead. And those super hot chicks on the phone, you don't have to drive them anywhere. As soon as you orgasm, you can just throw the phone next to your bed and go to sleep. Really? Yeah. No, you don't have to pay for dinner or anything. Okay, what else? Slow down enough to do it right. If I'm tired or emotionally overwhelmed, don't rush. Um, and just, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, don't touch Tinder. I should really use Tinder when I go to sleep. I think thinking about it early in the morning is not good. So let's try to do that. Not in the morning. Let's try that. So to tonight, I'm going to use Tinder before I go to sleep. But then I'm not. I'm going to make a point to just... Once I'm, like, totally spent, then I can, like, trip out about, like, potential pussy. But it's such a waste of time. It just... Wait until all your time is, like, used up, and then you can, like, waste some time on Tinder. All right, what else? Uh, emotional, so um, I'm going to say some negative shit. No one's listening. I'm really going to die, really, as sure as tomorrow. I don't have forever, so whatever I want to do, um, I should try to do it soon. And uh, But slow is fast. Don't rush through things. But Eventually, I'm really going to die, right? For sure. This isn't, like, a dream I'm going to wake up from. I'm going to turn into dust and be gone forever uh, after, um, you know, just a, a certain amount of time that's probably less than a hundred years. Yes. yes. Yeah. So if I'm a, if I'm a 44 year old male, you know, I could, I could be dead in 30 years, right? It just based on 30 or 40 years based on average life expectancy. Yes. yes. So it's not even guaranteed. I mean, I could die tomorrow, but basically, for sure, I'm going to be dead. And flash forward six, 60 years, I think you could say for sure I'm dead or as good as dead. What's the point? Just I'm really going to die. Really? Really? No joke. As sure as tomorrow, as real as this microphone, as sure as the next morning. Enough of those mornings, I'm going to be gone. Worm food dissolved. And that's a. Uh, that's just true. This is not like a dream I'm gonna wake up from. Yeah. Yeah, that's real. That's how it fucking is. Which point? So that reminds me that uh, most of the world is not me. Almost all of the world is not me. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah. Almost all of life is not me. And uh, if I want to be nice to people, I should remember that they're they're all my. Uh, everybody's my. Everybody could, any person that I see is somebody's son, mother, father, or daughter. And so if I want to be nice to people, I should remember that. And we all share common ancestors. But sometimes it's easier to help other people than to help myself. And so if I can do that with no skin off my back, cool. But I'm not sending money to that lady in Africa anymore because I don't want to get a job. I don't have a job. I don't have any money. And I don't want to turn my life upside down for some stranger because they'd fucking eat you if they could. Really, yeah, that person, she, that stra those strangers, they don't really give a shit about you. She's not giving me any money. She could have... She, Yeah, what's the point? Just, uh... People care way more about their selfish shit than they do about the lives of strangers. And you and I are strangers to most people. Can you substantiate that? Isn't it true that, uh... You could buy a Toyota that would get you from point A to point B for $30,000 less than, you know, a, a, one of the higher-priced Teslas. Yes. yes. Isn't it true that for $30,000, you could pretty certainly save lives of starving people in Africa? Yes. yes. So people are going to rationalize that how they will, but what that basically says is that uh, just people care way more about their 
their selfish luxury stuff than they do about the lives of strangers. And because that's how their actions are. I mean, they could literally save the lives of strangers instead of buying a lot of that luxury shit. But they're not going to say that. They're going to say like, no, you can't think of it that way. I know, I know. But at the end of the day, they could save lives instead of buying that luxury thing. They're going to say what they will about that. But everybody's like that. Like I could go get a job at some place and I could dedicate my time. Instead of doing this shit, I could go get a job at Burger King. I'm not going to do that. And then those people in Africa, they're also not going to do that. They're also human. They also are not like... They're, they could save lives. They could save animal lives. They could just not eat that animal. But they're going to be like, I want bacon and I'm going to kill that fucking animal because I care way more about my selfish stuff than you. Really? Yeah. Also, kids. Kids are unnecessary luxury things. And when people have sex, they're going to they're gonna try to get whatever they can for their kid. And if that means you're, if that's to your detriment, they don't, they'll, they'll opt for that. They care way more about their thing than they do about your life. And so if you let them, they'll rope you into taking your time and money and, and they're going to serve their interests. Really, everybody's kind of prone to do that. And so basically, if, you, if you're not careful, people can like use and abuse you and they're always going to say, you should like do the thing that converts your time and your effort into serving my ends. And so I just want to make sure to like not do that. But they're not going to say that. They're going to say, no, it's beautiful. It's wonderful. But they'll fucking eat you if they can. <laughs> really? Yeah. And the worst example of that is slaughterhouse animals. If you just look at pigs and sheep, in uh pigs and sheep in the slaughterhouses that's the most disgusting example of just like i see that you suffer you're obviously a being with like pain and fear you have eyes and ears we share a common ancestor that we have our dna is so similar to pigs that you can graft their skin they're smarter than dogs they're not like plants plants don't have a central nervous system i see that you suffer pig i see but can you do anything about it no i want bacon i don't want to hear about your mortal pain and suffering just i want my fucking selfish shit so I don't know, that's the way people are, but if you're not careful, they'll fucking eat you if they can. Even just through time and money, people will kind of devour your time and money if you let them. And so it's good to just not fucking let them. Really, yeah. But it's good to remember people are animals too, and uh, they do some good stuff. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what else? If you think life is a painful, terrifying nightmare, well, cool, now death is like a good thing. But if, you, uh, if you're scared to death, then uh, there must be something good in life that you're worried about not being able to do anymore. So just enjoy that. If you're if life is good, cool, enjoy it. If life is awful, don't worry, it'll be over before you know it. And then you're like, no, I don't want it to be over. Well, then enjoy it, enjoy it. You can always enjoy it. All, as long as you're alive, you can always enjoy it. All we have to do is decide what to do with the time you're given. And you can always initiate new thoughts and actions. Really? Yeah. Counter solipsism, what does that mean? Uh, so somebody might, there might be a voice. <laughs> There's something that might say like, uh, dude, we're all one, man. Or, uh, I don't know. Sometimes somebody might say like, how do you know everything in life isn't just your imagination? I might think that I might start to think something like that. And then I remind myself that like, that's fucking bullshit because, uh, I don't really know that. But what I do know is that for sure there was a time when I was young, when I had no, basically not, I had a totally different body and I had a totally different mind. And before I was born, I don't remember anything. And I don't, I think I had no body like 50 years ago and so there's a time before there's a time long ago when i had no mind and no body and no memory and there's a time when i die that i have no mind and no body that shit that's not my mind and my body it doesn't make sense to call that me that's like as not me as it gets so what's my point so just that's just the world is not words the world is not words and people are gonna they might try to reconstruct the words to like rope in a bunch of extra stuff into that word but it doesn't make sense to really call that me me is like my mind and my body and so the shit that's not my mind and my body that says not me as it gets really yeah there's new people being born all the time they're blessedly free of my problems and uh that'll keep happening so it's good somewhere really yeah don't think about sex aging or death don't try try not to dwell on things you can't control and you can jerk off when you go to bed and be nice to your knees and your hips and don't slam your knee into the ground a lot uh don't drive over 80 miles an hour don't revisit memories of ex-girlfriends and just be cool, honey, buddy. Just be cool, honey, buddy. Just be cool, honey, buddy. Tell that fucking bitch to chill. Hey, just be cool, honey, buddy. We're going to be like three little Fonzies. What's Fonzie like? Come on, Yolanda. What's Fonzie like? Cool? What? Cool? Exact All right. What is that? That's from Pulp Fiction. Uh, okay, so pray visualize. What do you want to visualize? Uh, I want to visualize working out. I want to visualize not, to, I have to not touch Tinder in the morning. 
basically touching tinder in the morning sets up my brain to like trip out about sex for like the next hour and so i should not i have to make a rule that like don't touch tinder to like go to sleep and then we're gonna try that we're gonna try to not even touch tinder until i go to sleep and then when i go to bed i'm gonna make a point to just just like doing the laundry i'm gonna go through the laundry and i'm just gonna click on the little things i'm gonna say the little things and then i go to sleep and just assume there's no pussy but don't waste all that fucking time and mental energy on it really yeah it's just there's not gonna be any pussy anyway but if you if it takes up all your fucking brain power that's awful okay so what's the point uh, okay so that's it dear god help me to be happy and healthy now my dreams come true god bless anybody watching my live stream help them to be happy and healthy now after dreams dreams come true uh visualize what do you want to visualize i visualize uh finishing my sculpture and having it look really good what are three things you're proud of and grateful for I'm proud of my animation portfolio. I'm proud of having gone skydiving twice. I'm proud of my fitness level. Uh, what are you grateful for? I'm grateful my dad pays all my bills. I'm grateful that I don't have cancer. I'm grateful that I'm tall. What are you excited about? I'm excited about frantically masturbating to super hot chicks. I'm excited about... Um, I'm excited about getting better at jujitsu. I'm excited about doing improv acting. All right, what are your goals for the day? I want to learn a new jiu-jitsu move. I want to go running. I want to do, you know, two hours of drawing, maybe three hours of 3D modeling. That's basically it. Yeah, do some workout. Do uh, do some weird. Just I just want to feel good. I just want to do stuff that makes me feel good. And my real goal is like I don't want to touch Tinder until I go to sleep. And then from now on, I want to not touch Tinder. Tinder is like a toxic thing, and so Tinder is not to be touched until the last 10 minutes of going to sleep. Just like looking at porn. It's basically the same as looking at porn. I want to make sure to not look at porn because it'll just be on my mind all the time. So basically just just Tinder and porn, I just want to think of them as like the same thing and don't even touch them until I go to sleep and then I can waste all that mental, just, then you just go to sleep. But in the mo if I think about it in the morning, it's going to be my, on my mind all day. So yeah. Okay, so what else? That's it. Uh, report goals. Uh, right. So what did you do yesterday? Did, did your jujitsu move work yesterday? No, I tried to, I would do, I want to do a triangle on somebody when they're, when I have them in mount position, but it didn't work because it just, there wasn't really the opportunity to do it. It seems too hard to really like set that up anyway. So I'm not going to even try to do that. Let's just try to do mount escape. All right. So let's break down the mount escape into five steps. So that I know you guys, guys like butt shots, shots from Adam, Adam. I'm going to show you guys, guys the mount escape details. details. So check, check this out. out. If you've ever done this one where we do the frame, frame and, and we cook with the foot, foot and we bring it Backward. Here's, Here's a little detail to make it easier to get the foot. So, so one of the things that I've seen from my students is they'll, they'll try to hook, hook and it just doesn't, doesn't work. work. If, if you, you want to get this leg, leg to make it easier to pick up with a heel, do this first. first. Take, Take the, the bottom, bottom leg and begin to drive in. Most people, not all, but most people have a pretty weak external rotation. And that means as the leg goes out, they don't have a lot of flexibility there. And a lot of times that leg wants to come back in anyway. So what we do is we begin to push. And once you feel the resistance there, begin to catch. Then you can hook up to the green leg in. All right, that's your mount escape. All right, so what is mount escape? Uh, Put two hands on there. Uh, put two hands on there. Um, put two hands on the right hip. What else? Um, uh, drive, drive my right knee into their right leg. Their left leg, yeah. What else? Um, uh, drive my right into the right leg, and then um, and.
and then hook my left foot around their left leg. I think that's the gist of it. So turn sideways. So really, number one is is put put your elbows against their knees and back of my head on the mat. Um, put two hands on their hip. Turn hips to the right a bit. So what do I do? Uh, I put my elbows against their knees, and then I put my hands on their hip, and then I turn my hip sideways to the right a bit, and then I drive my right knee out into their left leg, and then I hook my left foot around their left leg. And escape to half guard. All right, what do I do? Put my elbows against their knees and my head and my head back against the mat. Put two hands on their right hip. We'll just make that one thing. We'll say, put my elbows against their knees. We'll just say, elbows against their knees, head against the mat. hands on their two hands on their right hip on on their two hands on their hip to my right so what do we got elbows against knees head against mat Two hands, two hands on hip, right. All right. All right, so what is it? Elbows against knees, head against mat, two hands on hip, to the right. What else? Uh, Turn my hip sideways to the right a bit. Turn my hip sideways to the right. Drive my right knee into their, drive my knee, drive my knee out to the right.
drive my knee out to the right against their leg. What else? Uh, hook my left foot around their leg. Hook my left. Hook my left heel around their leg. Hook my left heel around their leg and pull it quick. And then escape to the right. Escape to the right side to half guard. And, you know, probably underhook them too. Uh, and now, now once I have a heel here, here, I can lever against, against it, it like, like, do like, like that, here, and I can start, start to use my elbow, elbow to push it to like the side, and now, now the, the position changing, so I'm so thinking, thinking about underhook now. now. Yeah, escape to right side. Frame. So, so see how Joey's starting to dig and underhook on me, I'll probably frame on the elbow. Escape to the right side. Half guard. Half guard. Escape to the right side, half guard, and try to underhook. Or frame. Okay, got it. All right. Fucking mosquito bite. All right, so I got the conceptual. Take it to physical. I'm gonna try it in the wild. All right.
So, elbows against knees, head on mat, two hands on the hip. Turn my hips sideways to the right. Drive my knee against their leg. Hook my left heel around their leg, pull it quick. Escape to right side to half guard and try to underhook or frame. Elbows against knees, elbow against knees, head against the mat, hands over hips to the right, turn to the right, drive my knee into their leg, and then hook it. And then let's get to the right. Elbows against knees, elbow against knees, head against the mat, hands to the right, turn my hip, drive into the leg, hook with the heel, escape to the right. Elbows against knees, Elbow against knees. Elbows against knees. Head against the mat. Hands to the right. Turn to my side. Turn to the right. Uh, drive into the leg. Hook the hook with the heel. All right, I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm going to try that today. So that's that's my goal today at jiu-jitsu. I'm going to try the mount escape and I'm going to and I'm going to wrestle with somebody kind of easy and I'm just going to let them get me into mount or I might even start out in mount and I'm just going to try that. So that's my goal in jiu-jitsu today. You know like to, I, I wasted like an hour. What am I trying to say? You know what I should probably do? Nobody's listening, right? But I should probably just record. I should probably just record this, le this little script that I read in the morning. Like I read the same script in the, every morning. I should probably just record this and just play it while I work out. Instead of reading it every day. Like why read it every day? It does help to like think about it. But like, what's your point? I don't know. I should try that. Like I should try to just record this same spiel since I'm reading it every morning. Just, just listen to it while I work out. Let's try that. All right. Record spiel on weekend and just listen during workout. Yeah, 
I should just do that. It's just rant for 20 minutes. I should do that, really. That would probably save a lot of time. What do you think, Sean? I'm gonna try to do that. I'm gonna try just because my workout is like 50 minutes anyway. So why not just listen to the spiel during my workout? Yeah. Yeah. Let's. I'm gonna try that. But I'll I'll record it on the weekend. I have to record like a version of it that says all the stuff. Let's do that. I'm going to try that. So on Sunday, I'm going to keep reading it, but on Sunday, I'm going to try to just read it and just listen to it during my workout because it takes like 50 minutes anyway, and the workout takes 50 minutes. And I think that might just be like a better day, but it helps to like think that shit. Okay. So anyway. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you failed a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. 
Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed, but guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything's out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. 
Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You got to get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school, you worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it, move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it, someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it, stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything's out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past it. Learn to not let life hijack your brain. At work, you've been working your ass off for that new promotion. You don't fucking get it. Someone else does. Maybe they kiss better ass than you do. Guess what? Get over it. Life will hijack your mind if you let it. Don't allow all these things to make you a lesser person. You must own your mind. Don't let life own yours. Get after it. Stay hard. Well, life took me somewhere unexpected. I'm unprepared. Um, it's about six degrees out here, and I'm underdressed. But guess what? No one gives a fuck. You gotta get the motherfucker in. Sometimes life can really hijack your fucking mind. When that happens to you, you're all fucked up. Your goals, your ambitions, everything is out the fucking window. In life, we all go through different things. Sometimes your girlfriend or boyfriend breaks up with you. Guess what? Get the fuck over it. They no longer want you. Maybe you fell a test in school. You worked your ass off. Guess what? You failed the fucking test. Get over it. Move past. And whatever my 100% will be, I don't know what's going to happen to me. Tomorrow, what if you can't run? I will figure what the fuck I can do. Oh, yeah, come on, let's go. Boom, and we're live, David Goggins. Your book is fucking fantastic, man. This has been my running partner. The audio version of it has been my running partner for the last week. It's fucking amazing, man. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank well, you, you guys are doing something uh, very unusual. The book is great. I've read, I've read it, like sat down and read, read. But the the audio book is really interesting, right? Because you and the gentleman you wrote it with, yeah, Adam, Adam, Adam slept, Skolnick, Adam Skolnick, who who reads it, then you come on and talk about things in between. So it's more than just the book. Right. It's the book plus. It's the book plus like a podcast. Right. Yeah. So. All that came to be, man, is um, as I was going through this book for the last year, we would go through, change stuff up. I have so many stories, man. We went through interviews so many people, so many stories. He would come back and read it to me, all my changes. And when he read it, I'm like, man, this guy has a great reading voice. I love his reading voice. And I started getting these different ideas about doing it. I'm like, you know what? Maybe he can read it and I can do my podcast on the side. And you can like, after each chapter, in between chapters, make it real interactive type of thing. And that's kind of how it came to be, man. In the beginning, I gotta be honest, in the beginning I was like, who is this motherfucker talking for David Goggins? I was gonna call <laughs> Dave, like, Dave, can you redo this? Why don't you do it? Why are you, but, but it works. Right. It really does work. 
Yeah. Like as as it goes like, on, and I got also it's very obvious that you and him are good friends. So when you guys are talking, then I don't mind him reading for you as much for some strange reason. Right. I know it doesn't make any sense. Well, I want to say we're good friends. I'm, I'm just joking, Adam. Look at you right now. Um, <laughs> he became a pain in my fucking ass during this process, man, because you know he's just uh, he's a real anal guy. You know he. He helped Why out a lot. You know, I'm a I'm a real raw, sadistic type of mindset, and he uh, he helped me put that on paper, man. So I give him a lot of credit for that. Well, it it comes across. Your book is outstanding, and you know, it's 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 more than just sitting like sitting across from you and you telling your story is one thing, but this long, detailed history of how you became to be the person you became, I think it's very educational for people because they can realize like oh he wasn't always this guy <laughs> right this right. is what's fucked up about people like you see a guy who's like you who runs i mean how many ultra marathons did you run in a row you had some insane i, was, uh, I ran 800 in eight weekends in a row. just stop and think about that yeah. ladies and gentlemen 800s means eight 100 mile races eight weekends in a row a hundred mile race will put you out for fucking six months right you know you ran eight of them eight weekends it's a fuck it's a fucking insane accomplishment it was nuts. you think about a person like that you think of them as in this like static fully formed version you don't usually get to see and especially someone like you who you went into so much depth about your rise and fall and rise and fall it wasn't like a straight linear process between you getting inspired and you becoming this bad motherfucker no no, it wasn't like uh, what's that show called? Uh, that, that Will Smith plays, that that black guy who kind of makes it in um, in the financial world. Uh, Pursuit of Happiness. I never saw that. Yeah, it's a great movie. It wasn't like Pursuit of Happiness, man. Like like where the guy struggles and he and he gets over it and he makes it. Yeah. I fell on my ass. I, I thought I got the top of Mount Everest, and Mount Everest just fucking slide right underneath me, man. I was like, God, dog, I gotta start from scratch again. Scratch became my friend. Literally, man. So, you know, that's that's how you put in the book, man. Just going up, going down, going up. Just the real raw version of how my life was. And it was so in depth to go back through your life with a fine tooth comb that I almost got embarrassed to even put it out there to people. Yeah. That's what you understand, man. Like, even me right now to talk to you, I'm in the car for a fucking hour getting pumped up because I'm I'm a shy, introverted, leave me alone type of guy. Like I'm still that motherfucker who is six years old, you know, at a play who can't say his line because I'm no longer stutter in front of five people. So I walk off the stage. That's still me. So every day I'm fighting that dude. So people think, oh my god, man, you're on a podcast, you look so crazy, so evil. No, I'm trying to be locked into Joe. So my mind is we're off saying, let's run out the damn door because people <laughs> are watching me on the fucking podcast. I want to open this damn door and get the hell out of here, man. <laughs> So that's the real me. So I'm not sadistic, man. I'm focused on what I have to do to stay locked into the game of life. And that's what, and that's why I tell people, man, I, I, I go there. I go there. That's one of the reasons why this book is so good is because you're so honest about your vulnerabilities and how you overcome them. And for people that see someone who's a beast, who's done great things, you just assume that they're different than you. Right. But then you hear about your insecurities and your pitfalls and all the things that went wrong with you. And you realize, well, God damn it, those are the same things that go wrong with me. Like maybe I have that inside of me and I've just never summoned it. Right. And I, I'll tell you this, I started really realizing that when I started overcoming myself, I started getting around these real alpha males, these hard, hard men. And I always put people way above me when I was growing up. Like, my God, they had to have a lot more than me to get to where they're at. And a lot of them did. But once you get around the, the best of the best of the people best people. People ask me all the time. Chris, you can kind of start breaking take... them down and realizing, man, you, you're just as fucked up as me. Like, like we all have. But all you did was you hit it better. Your, your, your upbringing, your mom and dad, your society, the way you were raised, it hit it better than, than, than mine. You weren't the only black kid, or it was like five, in a, in a school. You know, I can't hide. Going through buds, I was the only black kid. You can't hide. But I started realizing just because I look different than you, a lot of you motherfuckers can't hide either. So it started giving me courage to watching people that we all have a story, we all have a jacked up life in one way or another. Some of us don't have the guts to talk about it though. 
And that's where I found the guts to talk about mine. Well, there's some, there's purity in physical pursuits, right? Because it doesn't matter what your social status is. It doesn't matter how people perceive you. When it, when it comes down to how long can you stay in that pool, when it comes down to how far can you run, when it comes down to how much can you push yourself past the part where you want to quit, how far can you keep going? There's a purity in that, that it, it, it dissolves social order, all that bullshit, all the, what people think about you goes out the window. It's what, who, who are you right now? That's right. Who are you right now? That's a true statement, man. And I look at it as, as, as psychological warfare. And that's where I started learning that, that life is one big psychological warfare that you play on yourself. You play on yourself, man. The most important conversation I ever had my, with, is, is with myself. And the shit I was telling myself was so fucked up, it was so wrong, it was so misguided. And other people start to write that dialogue for you also. And it starts to be what you say to yourself every single day. And I started creating a whole nother warfare. A whole nother battle started coming. I was like, oh, hang on a second. You have these tools. You have these tools. Your life was basically the perfect, the perfect grounds for training for where you need to go in your life. All the beatings, all the, all the bullying, all the, you know, you going through uh, learning disabilities, all the struggles. It was the absolute perfect training ground for you to go to where you need to go. And that's how I started looking at my life versus woe is me, poopy pants, kick a rock down the street mentality. It was, nah, God just hooked you right the fuck up. He hooked you right up, man, with the perfect place. You were training. The first 18, 19, 20, you were training for this stuff, man. You have the advantage of everybody else versus, oh my God, they're so above me. They came from a great family. Mom and dad love them. They didn't have to learn, they didn't stutter, they didn't struggle. No, oh, man, your struggle is what made you who you are now. So I started flipping this into a whole different, I started being a master of what I was scared of. I was scared of my mind. And I became a, literally a master of that. And that's what now, from now on, it sets me apart from most people. I started diving into that. And that is a, a big part of the story from the goal of your childhood and the abusive father and then having this great guy who's going to become a stepdad and he gets murdered. It's like right when you're about to get out of it. Everything looks good. Boom. And then he gets murdered. It's like... These things really did sort of set you up to start from scratch again. You just go, okay, roger that, we start from scratch. And now you have that attitude. You developed it through all of these horrible personal experiences, all the trials and tribulations, all the evil shit that people try to do to you. That sort of set you up to be able to deal in a way that a lot of people can't. Well, I used to look at my life from a different vantage point. And when you're, when you're in all the muck, and you're just walking in muck and walking in muck and walking in muck. You don't see that. Some lame level like yourself. You should just be, you're, you're, you should be true to yourself. I do that too. I do that too. Most of the time, I do art. I do solitary art type cerebral stuff I, I do I follow my dream also but I want to spend a little time facing my weaknesses just for a sense of challenge I want to be able to like do this stuff. Who's going to I know no one cares I care I care this is my fucking channel I want to get myself to go to the same Paul acting class now I know how this I know how this thing works I've learned how this rig operates I might not understand a lot about the world but I've definitely learned the flaws and the ways to work this particular rig and i know that like this improv acting class is going to be like a scary thing it's not a big deal but for me it's like a big deal and so i i knew that if i did i i've learned that like if i can establish a new habit and if i can maintain that habit for about three to six months i'll find a way to make it fun i'll find a way to make it like a normal it'll be not a big deal if i can do it for six months but in the first month to three months, it's gonna try to buck me off. It's gonna say like, oh, I can't do this. This is too traumatic. I, I just, I'm not the right person for this. I'll, if I can survive the first three months, I'll find a way to make it fun. I'll find a way to just be like, oh, this is no big deal. Actually, I can be kind of good at this. But I know that like, if I, so basically that happened. That happened like the last, like over the last six months, I took, I took improv class, improv acting classes the last, since uh, 
November of last year and sure enough like I I took it for like a month and then I was like I just can't do this actually I took it for one day and then I was like I just can't do this and then I took it for like a month and I was like I just can't do this and then I quit and then I took it for like two months and then I was like I just can't do this and it's this it's very similar to a lot of things I do where like it's gonna buck me off early and then I'm gonna hang in there a little longer and then it's gonna buck me off again and then I'm gonna hang in there longer so now I'm doing it I haven't done it now for like two months and I'm I'm gonna do it again. So I'm going today, and I'm trying not to like make it like a big deal. But in me, it's like it's kind of a big deal. It's kind of silly. But uh, so I'm 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 gonna grease I'm gonna grease the wheels a little bit. Again, like this is not like the right thing to do. And I I, I remembered that like I have this idea that like there's some lame level I can do it at, and so I should ratchet things down to the to the lamest level that I can do it at. So I think do it lame, do it slow do it virtually do it any level that I can do it and then try to ratchet it up later but don't there isn't just it and not it so which one point? I'm cutting myself a little sock I'm just gonna do it slightly drunk that's what I can do is I can I could go there and I, there's a voice in my head that says don't get drunk like you should do it sober you should do it the hard way that's cool for like the cool people the cool people like fuck that I can do it with the hard way if I do that I might like traumatize myself and I might I, I don't want to make it unnecessarily hard for me so I'm gonna go to the liquor store today and I'm gonna buy uh I don't even like alcohol but I'm gonna drink I'm gonna get like a pack of Heineken beer and I'm just gonna drink like three beers I don't know six enough to get slightly inebriated and then I'm just gonna go to the class inebriated my my goal for today is I just want to go to the same improv acting class and I, I haven't gone for like two months so right now it's like a big deal but I know that if I go there for like two or three days I'll show myself that it's not a big deal and then I won't have to drink beer but I'm just gonna drink beer because I just want to. I just want to get myself to go to the damn thing. So my idea is like, go there, do it, do it lame, do it drunk, but do it. <laughs> so just that's what I want to get. Whatever is gonna get me to do the fucking thing. But I don't think that's good. I think obviously, you know, it would be cooler to do it not drunk. But I, I want to. By hook or by crook, I want to do the fucking thing. So what's the point? Just it's not good to drink, but like, I'm just using it as a little. Cinderella magic slipper to get me to ha be able to do something which normally I can't really do. No one cares what you do, John. I care. I care so much now. All right, let's run through this. Nobody's watching, right? That's that's pretty much all I have to say. Also, the other thing I should do is like I should I should go to this. They have they have a class. They have a bunch of different improv classes. I, I should make it easy for myself. Like I should whatever I should try this class. If this class is like really unpleasant or inconvenient. Go to another class. There's some class I can go to that's, that will make it... I have to make it a manageable, enjoyable grind. What does that mean? Just, it has to be something that I can do regularly that isn't like this traumatic, overwhelming thing. So, if this class is like... Un, if the, if, for whatever reason, this class is too awful, go try another class. But I want to just go to one improv class per week. And then the rest of my time, I'm doing my art stuff. So, if somebody says like... You're wasting your time. You're doing this stuff. You should be true to yourself. I do that too. I do that too. Most of the day, I do my strength. But I can also, it's, I have 24 hours in a day. I'm gonna do my weakness. When I take a shower, I'm not like doing some new thing. It's like, oh, you're doing too many things. I just won't take a shower. I'll skip a shower. I'll go to the improv class. I'll skip something else. But there's just, there's just time. There's just time. I'm not doing like too many things. What's the point? You know when people say that? What's the point? The world is not words. So I want to remind myself, the world is not words. What do you mean? I'm gonna bring up the sheet. This, I'm gonna, this is my therapy. I don't care. Um, you're free to do whatever you want. I have to remind myself I'm gonna be particularly off and I'm gonna be particularly weird today because I'm kind of like freaked out about this class. So I cut myself slack if I feel, if I feel uh, like really keyed up or something. It's normal. It'll pass. But I cut myself slack for feeling uh, kind of jostled today. I'm gonna be particularly nutty. I'm prone to be nutty today. It's fine. I'll get used to this. But right now, it's like, oh my god. All right, so ready? Talk, Sean. Talk. What's the no-word mantra? I think I like the no-soul mantra. What's the no-soul mantra? It's the devil. It's the devil. I'm doing the I'm doing the work of the devil. What's your point, son? Uh, I, uh, okay. So anyway, I have this idea. I have this thing that I say to myself every morning publicly. I say it to myself publicly because I'm doing the work of the devil. I'm serving the devil. The devil is giving me secret devil pleasures 
in exchange for corrupting the youth. Really, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, I'm doing the devil's work, I'm talking to somebody out there, and I'm trying to convince you that you don't have a soul. It's the devil it can lure you off your God-given path. I'm doing the bidding of the devil. What's the point? I don't know, that's just a story. What's the point, John? I think it's good to, I want to remind myself, it's good to ground my life in not in superstition and so like sometimes I worry about that sometimes I worry I listen to Joel Osteen Joel Osteen says you have a God-given path when I listen to Joel Osteen I believe in a soul I believe in a God-given path I normally pursue my God I think my God-given path is to be an artist I do the God thing also but sometimes I want to uh, do some some uh, stuff that's not my path what's the point I don't know, I just think there's stories I think there's stories that people apply to the world and Joel Osteen kind of I don't know, what am I trying to say? <sighs> don't get crazy, Sean. I'm just trying to make this make sense to myself. You know, if there's... Some people say, if you don't do the will of God, if you don't do your God-given path, that's the devil. And if you do that, you're going to go to hell or something like that. What about people who, like, existed on North Sentinel Island? Like, what about, like, natives who were never exposed to the idea of God? Are they going to go to hell? Because they don't even know who God is. They don't even know Joel Osteen. They, don't, they weren't indoctrinated into the do good stuff. If they were never told what was good or what was bad, how can they be blamed for just not doing their God-given path? And then like, what about a kid, right? Like there was a time before, when I was a kid, before I even was told about God, what if I didn't do my dream? Like what if there was some kid who was too young to even understand anything about God or what God wanted them to do or what his true path was. And let's say he did some like bad stuff. He doesn't even know what sinning is. If he like punches his sister in the arm and people go, oh, you're a sinner. You're like not respecting your family. If he then dies at like five years old before he even learns about what's good or bad, is he a bad kid? I just, I don't totally believe it. I think there's just stories. I think if, if people who existed before, when people were cavemen, if they mug somebody or if they, what's your point? I don't, I, I, when I listen to Joel Osteen, I'm gonna believe in stories. I'm gonna believe in the soul. I'm gonna believe in God because I think it's just thoughts. I think you can, you, you, you think the shit that you think because you're exposed to certain thoughts, but if you weren't even exposed to certain thoughts, I'm not sure how you can think something that you weren't exposed to. So what's your point? You know, maybe there's a God. There could be a God. When I watch Joel Osteen, I believe in God. If I was on my deathbed or if I was in like, they say there's no atheists in like foxholes. I'm sure there'll be a point in my life where I'm like, I'm so sure there's God. Like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I have to go to, I know I'm going to go to heaven. I, I do believe in God sometimes, but I think believing is basically like an active thing. I think there's just thoughts. That's, I think there's like, there's physical reality and then there's thoughts and the world is not your thoughts. Like it, it, when there's, in terms of physical reality, you could just say like, that's what happened. Like you make a video of something, that's what happened. Now, my interpretation of that or why it happened or was that God's will or was that this or that, I don't see like, if I don't see like God there with like a robe and a beard, I'm just gonna say that's a story. That's like, okay, was that God's will? Was that not? I don't know. That's an interpretation. That's a story. That's something I'm, uh, that's thoughts that I'm applying. Like if I'm thinking like, why did that happen? Or was that God's will? I think that's an interpretation, but in terms of like physical reality, I don't see God. I don't see like, God, can you like show me who you are? All right, so God's not like coming out and talking to me. So I'm going to, maybe there's a God, maybe there's God's will. But if I go to hell and God's like, dude, you didn't do what I said. God, you got to like physically show me some shit. At least I will try to do good. But like, if I end up on heaven's gate and heaven's like, God's like, hey, you didn't do my will. It's like, there's no evidence of like your, your will and then those those people on like north sentinel island or the cave people are they going to hell like are they going to hell because they if they weren't even exposed to your will you know those natives on like north sentinel island they don't even have christians there like they're just going to do whatever they're going to do i just think there's stories but i could be wrong maybe there's a god I, i'm going to think there's god i'm going to do god's will also but when i'm making others i'm trying to i'm trying to just place my decisions off reality do you want to talk about this long time no let's just say this real quick What's your point, Sean? I don't know. Just, I think there's just... I, I'm just going to say this shit to make myself do shit. I'm going to be particularly nutty today. No one should watch this. I'm, I'm going to be particularly anxious today. Get to the point, Sean. Get through, get through this fast. I, th I don't think there's a soul. I think I could be wrong, but I don't think there's a soul because... Right now, I don't think there's a soul. But when I listen to Joel Osteen, I'm going to think there's a soul. But if, what, if I want to get myself to do some new stuff, I find it more useful to think there's no soul because... 
although I, I don't like the idea of being chained some sort of like that's me that's I think it's more conducive to a growth mindset to occasionally not think there's a soul and just think you can just do whatever you can physically do. but then sometimes I'll think there's a soul get to the point Sean if there's a soul like what happens if somebody gets brain damage what happened to their soul if somebody gets hit in the head they forget who they were they get Alzheimer's they seem like a totally different person that'll happen sometimes is that person gonna go to heaven or do they have like what happens to their soul if they have brain damage and then if they have brain damage and they die does the brain damage version go to heaven or does the five-year-old version go to heaven or is the fifth-year-old version go to heaven it doesn't make sense and then if if an, does an animal have a soul if an animal doesn't have a soul back when humans were part animal did they have half a soul and then if china makes like a half human half pig hybrid and an animal doesn't have a soul does that does that thing have half a soul it doesn't make sense and so like, does a Venus flytrap have a soul? Does a tiger have a soul? Does a zebra have a soul? It does, it seems like, it's, to me, it seems like it's just story. It seems like it's words. It seems like people are applying words to the world and that makes for some weird confusion. Like, like my parents, they played kind of a trick on me. For a long time in my life, at least for, till the age of like two or three, there was just sights and sounds going into my eyes and ears and turning into thoughts and actions. And then eventually my parents kind of played a little trick on me. As far as I could tell, they said, you're Sean, you're Sean. And now I think there's a Sean. I'm like, oh, I guess there's a Sean. I think that's kind of like Coca-Cola. Like, what is Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola is lots of shit. Coca-Cola is like constantly changing board members and service workers and trucks and bottling plants. But really like, it's a label. It's a label that applies to like what could otherwise be thought of as lots of stuff that's kind of changing. But if it changes too much, people go, if, when they change into new Coke, they're like, hey, that's not the Coca-Cola we know and love. And so they go, okay, I'll, I'm sorry, I'll change back to like, we'll, we'll try to stay to the pattern that you understand. So that's kind of why I say this thing, is because I just want to get myself to do some new shit. I think this is good for me, particularly as like an older person, because I think sometimes people get sort of chained to these things that they think are their thing. They're like, that's my thing. There's a story in the Beatles song called uh, Eleanor Rigby. There's this guy called Father Mackenzie who's writing a sermon that no one will hear. It's a common thing for like older people is they think that's my thing or like she's the one. Well, maybe she has a restraining order against you. Maybe she's dead. You should come up with like a new one. Like if you think like that's my thing. Well, there's no, if, if Father Mackenzie is writing a sermon and things like I'm a sermon writer, that's my soul, that's my nature, that's my God given dream. Well, the church is closed. There's no more like jobs for sermon writers. You can like come up with a new story, but what's my point? Just, I think that story, if that story is serving you, if you believe that like, I'm a plumber, that's my God given dream. If that's serving you, if there's plumber jobs, cool. But if the plumber jobs are all gone, I think it's good to like say like, maybe that's just a story. What's the point? I don't know, that's legit. That's what I'm trying to say, this like no soul mantra thing. Also, I get, if somebody says like, you're Sean, then I, I wonder like, well, what happens to Sean when I die? And that's kind of a pain in the ass. I don't want to think that like, am I going to go into like infinite blackness when I die? I think it makes more sense that like, there isn't really like a Sean. There's just kind of like shit happening and there's always shit happening and there's other shit. There's like 8 billion other things that are kind of similarly happening. I just can't see those. The shit keeps going. And so I like that idea too. I think sometimes people create a fictional, uh, an ongoing, like a word doesn't change and a word is separate from its surroundings. But if it's in the real world, it's constantly changing and it's interconnected with its surroundings. And so I think sometimes people create a fictional ongoing heaven to create a fictional ongoing idea of a soul. But really, I think there's, I think there's just shit happening. And I think if you think about it, you were always kind of changing. And so, what's the point? I just think, I think there's a big interconnected, ever changing everything. And that kind of makes the world more sense to me. But in the midst of that interconnected, ever changing everything, people are, are applying these words to stuff. And the, a word basically makes, a, makes it seem like a thing is separate from its surroundings. And it makes a thing seem like it's not changing. But if it's in the real world, it's kind of interconnected with its surroundings and it's changing. And I think that's kind of how people like think of a soul. And I think that causes some confusion. So I'm trying to break that confusion. But after this, when I listen to old Joe Osteen, I'm going to believe in a soul. If somebody says like, hey, I thought you don't believe in a soul. Well, now I do. Now I do. Because I just think there's just thoughts. There's just thinking is kind of an active process. And I think that like, you didn't always believe in a soul. You didn't always believe in God. So if somebody says like, hey, I thought you were this. Well, now I'm, now I, now I think the, the other stuff. Because I think you can just think whatever you can physically think. That's the gist of it. I find it easier to do that if I don't believe that I'm a thing that's like a fixed thing. But sometimes I will. If thinking I'm a fixed thing keeps me consistent, then I'll think I'm a, I'll switch again. I, I didn't always believe this shit. 
I'll probably switch back later if it's useful. <sighs> okay, you think you're so smart, Sean. Not all the time necessarily, not all the time. All right, what else? Uh, okay, so I don't want to talk about this for more than 10 minutes. So, all or nothing thinking, what does this mean? Uh, there isn't just it and not it. I want to remind myself. There's a bunch of illusions that words create. One of them is that, like, I'm going to think, I can't do it. There isn't just it and not it. So if I think, like, I can't do cardio because I'm looking at some guy doing, like, a marathon, I'm going to be like, there, you're already doing cardio. That's cardio. If I had a heart rate monitor on right now, that's going to be elevating my heart rate. Now I can ratchet it up, ratchet it up. There's some lame level I can do it at. There isn't just it and not it. What else? Anything can be thought of as multiple things. So if I'm doing something and somebody says, that thing you're doing is bad, I'll be like, I'm not just doing that. I'm doing this other thing. And then if somebody says, well, that thing is bad. Well, I'm not just doing that. I'm doing like three things at once. One of those things is good, but people are mixed bags and actions are mixed bags too. And so even if somebody says like, there's just, there's gonna be this thing where like, on a regular basis, either a voice in my head or a voice from the outside world is gonna say, you're bad or that thing you're doing is bad. I, if I want to keep doing it, I should think of it as good. So there's like a positive counter thought that I can apply and be like, well, I think it's good. But <sighs> I'm really tired. This is going to be hard to get. Just say it slow, say it, say it tired, but say it. Yeah, so there's some sort of, I can think of it as like, yeah, maybe there's some bad stuff mixed in, but also good stuff. So if somebody says, this thing you're doing is like a midlife crisis. They're basically saying this thing you're doing is bad. That voice is gonna to try to stop me from doing that thing. They're trying to poo poo my thing. And I should just think, well, I don't think I'm doing it for some midlife crisis reason, but I don't know, maybe there's a little of that, but it definitely is something I wanna do. It definitely makes me happy. It definitely is something that I have wanted to do for a long time. It definitely possibly makes other people happy. There's good things about it also. So just, I wanna remind myself that like, even if that were, I'm gonna to try to counter the negative thought with some positive thoughts, but even if it's a little bad, even if there's a bad interpretation, I'll be like, yeah, but 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 good stuff also. There's there's good reasons too, but I'm gonna to try to focus on the good aspects. I think you can do that with basically anything. I think you can think of any, you could depict anything as like bad. If I wanna do it, and if I wanna feel good about it, I should try to think of it as good. And I just assume the world's gonna give me constant versions of like, that's bad, you're bad. I'll be like, well, I think I'm good. But then the last, I like the idea of like, the last resort is uh, just do it bad, do it bad. Who says you have to be good? I like that too. What's your point? Emerson, if I'm a child of the devil. So back in Emerson's day, he had the same problem. He, somebody was saying like, how do you know that thing you're doing isn't from the devil? He says, I live, my, he says, but these impulses may be from below. He says, well, they don't seem to me to be as such, but if I'm a child of the devil, then I'll live by the devil. So basically he was saying like, some, he was dealing with other people in the past in 1850, they were saying, that thing you're doing, it might be bad. That might be, you might be doing the devil's work. And he's like, he's, he tried to think of it as good. He's like, well, I don't think that it's bad. I don't think I'm doing the devil's work, but if I'm doing the devil's work, then fuck it. I'm, I guess I'm bad. I'm, I'm just doing my bad thing. What's the point? I like that idea. It's like, try to think of it as good, but then even if it's bad, just, I guess I'm bad, but I'm doing the fucking thing. I'm not breaking any laws. Like as long as you're not breaking any laws, just like, I want to think of it as good. I don't think I'm doing it for bad reason, but if I'm bad, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bad, but do, do the thing. Try to think of it as good, but last resort, whatever. Just do it bad. I like that. Okay, what else? But there's a way to think of it as good. You don't, your, your reasons for doing things aren't like clear cut. Somebody could possibly depict it as like, there's probably a little bad stuff mixed in. Who knows really why you're doing it? Like you could say like, you're doing it because of this. There's no way to like really measure that. It's just stories. It's just stories that people apply to stuff. Really? Kind of, like there, it's not perfect. That's the whole idea is there isn't black and white. Like there's shades of gray. Your reasons for doing things are kind of like, there's lots of reasons. It's not just one thing. That's the whole, the whole thing is like, it's not just one thing. The, the, it's not as simple as the words try to packet it as. And so there's a way to think of it as good. It doesn't fit under your neat little, because this one word, that's the whole, the whole idea is like the world is not words. Okay, Sean, is that good? Yeah, it's moving on. What else? Uh, mental filter, so again, no one should listen to this. I'm just reminding myself of these things. Cause like any one of these little errors can like fuck up my whole day or make me quit. And so I'm just trying to remind myself on a regular basis. Cause if I don't remind myself, I'll forget. Why? Cause the world isn't words and I'm gonna have some new interpretation in my head that's gonna make me potentially quit. And so I'm just reminding myself like, just don't quit. So keep going. Mental filter, say this. I wanna read the whole thing in less than five minutes. This is my therapy, go. 
All right, so there's a spectrum of stuff. There's a big interconnected, ever-changing everything. I'm gonna have a few words that are, I'm gonna be interpreting that thing. I have to remember that those words that I'm currently interpreting, interpreting things with, they're gonna pass. Like, I'm gonna think like, oh, I thought it was good, but now I think it's bad. Like, I'm like, oh, I thought I felt so good about life, but now I feel bad about it. Well, you felt good about it before. For, for some reason, there's gonna be some new words that are in my head that I'm lingering on. I just, I should know that those are gonna pass, or I should just know that those don't cover the whole spectrum of like ways to interpret things. There's somebody else who sees life as like good. You could also see it as good as if you thought how they thought, but for whatever reason, just I have to remind myself that those words, they don't cover the full gamut of the stuff. The words are gonna take like a little snippet of, of the infinite ever changing everything. So I should either actively try to put some new words in my head that make me think of the thing as good, or I should just know that, that that's going to pass. I might be in like a bad mood or whatever, but there's some other way to think of it that's good. And the, the words don't cover the whole spectrum. People are mixed bags. Life is mixed bags. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's lots of shit. So overgeneralizing is kind of like that too. Like if I start to think life sucks, Jordan Peterson says, life is an existential tragedy. Compared to what? Compared to what? There must be something in life that's good to compare that tragedy to. If you say life is a tragedy, then nothing is a tragedy. There must be some good stuff to compare it to. So if you say like life is a tragedy or everybody sucks, you're just in a bad mood. If you think about it, there's some people who don't suck. There's some th good things in life, in which case like it's not all a tragedy. There's some good stuff. Maybe you're just in a bad mood. It'll pass, but try to recalibrate and think of the good stuff. <sighs> yeah, so uh, grateful. Same thing with being grateful. So if I'm focused on my goals, I'm kind of focused on things I don't have. I'm like... I don't, ha I'm not an actor. I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a girlfriend. Yeah, well, guess what? You already have your limbs and you're not starving and you don't have cancer. If you didn't have those, you'd be like, fuck having a girlfriend. I'll take no cancer, thank you. So, yeah, you have the best things already. If you have no cancer and you have all your limbs and you're not starving, you win already. The rest of it's just bony, bonus. So just think of it as like going for bonus points. All right, what else? Mind reading, I'm not a mind reader. So regularly throughout the day, I might look at, I might think to myself, they're thinking this and that. They, they think this. I have no idea what anybody's thinking. If I, if I catch myself thinking, they're thinking this and that. That's always just me thinking stuff. That's my imagination because I'm not a mind reader. Really, can you substantiate that? Yeah, I just ask this thing. Isn't it absolutely true that a human is not, there's no evidence that a human is a mind reader. So I'm not a mind reader. Can I say that with, a lot can i say that with pretty much absolute certainty you are absolutely right all right so the, the chat gpt chat GBT represents the best of human knowledge so if there were scientists who discovered that like oh people might be mind readers they would tell you that the best of humans who have there's been humans who have studied this shit for a really long time they found no evidence that humans can do any actual mind reading. So it's nice to know that I'm not a mind reader. I can rest assured that I'm not a mind reader. I have no, I have no idea what he's, what he's thinking. That's always just my imagination. And so I should just remember, I'm tripping. I'm kind of tripping like a, you know, a stoner guy. He's like, dude, you're tripping. If I'm tripping out about, they think this and that, that's me thinking shit. So I have to consciously start thinking like, no, they're probably thinking some good stuff. I'll actively do that. Like if somebody, if I think that person hates you, I'll think, I'll think to myself, no, they probably like you. No, they said hello to you. Just counter it, counter it. Think some positive shit. Try to assume it's good until I know the facts. And I'll, I'll, I can just use my tongue. If I really can't control my thoughts, I can just talk it out. I'll say, I'll say actively, I'll say like, hey, yeah, they, they said hello to you. They, they were nice to you. They smiled when they looked at you. There's a lot of evidence that that person doesn't hate you. And I'll try to actively think of like three reasons why they, they like me. And then I'll be like, then I'll feel good because I think it's just thoughts. It's just thoughts. But if I sit there thinking like, they hate me, I just know it. They're thinking bad things about me. I'm gonna feel bad. If I think like, hey, they smiled at you, they said hello to you, they asked you how you were doing, those, they like you. Those are evidence they like you. And I go, oh, I guess they like me. It's just a thought. That's always just my imagination. So I'm gonna try to think positive shit until I know the, the good shit. But there's gonna be some bad shit that floats in there. I gotta actively replace it if I wanna feel good. Really, yeah, but at the end of the day, I'm not a mind reader. So that's always just, it's always just me thinking shit. I should try to think good shit until I see the facts. Even if they're thinking some bad things, they're probably thinking some good things also. So again, the, the world is not words. So even if they say, I think you're a jerk. Yeah, but you probably also think that I'm a good artist. You probably also think that I'm tall. You probably also think I have nice hair. You're just not saying that. So the world is not words. People are mixed bags. Like, 
the world is not your thoughts. There's just kind of like, there's lots of interpretations. It's not just that word. What else? Okay, I'm not, the, I'm not a fortune teller. So in the future, if I think I know this thing in the future is going to be bad, same thing. I actually don't know the future. I can know that for sure. Can you substantiate that? <sighs> Isn't it true that no human is a fortune teller? They can't see the future for certain. Can't you be pretty sure of that? Humans are not future predictors. They don't have like psychic New powers Mr. to predict Clean, the future. Isn't that, magic can you say that with, with a certain amount of certainty? So what's your point? So you're not a fucking fortune teller. So if you think to yourself, you are absolutely correct. If you think, I know this thing in the future is going to be terrible. You actually don't know. You're not a fortune teller. I'm not a fortune teller. I think you, you could even say that about like, I know that when I die, this and that, I'm going to go to hell. You actually don't know. You don't really totally know what's going to happen after you die. So it's nice to just be like, I don't know. I don't know. But try to think it's going to be something good until you know the fucking facts. If you want to get facts and try to guess on the future, you can do that. But like, ultimately, you don't really know the future. But you can like try to make some evidence-based preparations or something. Really? Yeah, prepare for the best. Hope for, hope for the best. Prepare for the worst is good. Which one? Just you don't really know. Ultimately, you don't really know the future. Uh, what else? Uh, try not to make emotional decisions. So the world doesn't. The world. There's just physical reality, as far as I can tear, tell. The world doesn't have emotions. So my emotions about the world are are gonna change. I'm gonna try not to make emotional decisions. What else? You think you're so smart, Sean? Not all the time. Not all the time necessarily. <laughs> All right, what else? Uh, labels, I'm not a label. So stupid is as stupid does, smart is as smart does, idiot is as idiot does. If you commit a crime, you're not permanently a criminal. Just try not to do more criminal stuff. If somebody says, don't try to be nice, you know you're just a little criminal. Okay, I'm a, I'm a criminal that does no more crimes and I help old ladies across the street every day and I donate to charity. It's a meaningless term. I'd rather be around a bad guy who does nothing but good stuff even if he's faking it than a supposedly good guy deep down who does no good stuff. It's a meaningless term. You can just do whatever you can physically do. It doesn't have to do have to have anything to do with what you previously did. But if you want to be a thing, you got to keep doing that thing. So the same thing is like, if you're not necessarily a good guy, you just got to keep doing shit. The idea is like, whatever the fuck I am, I just want to think, what do I want to do? How can I physically do it? Do I like it? Well, I want to keep doing it, then just do shit. But like, you can, you just, you're not like permanently a blah, blah, blah. So that goes for the good and the bad. Like if you want to be something, you got to keep doing that thing. If I want to be an artist, if I do six hours of art a day, that's as artist as it gets. But I, I'm not just by default an artist. If I don't do art every day, I'm going to get crappy at art. So what's my point? Just if, if you want to be a thing, you got to keep doing that thing. If you want to be a good guy, you got to keep doing good shit. But if you don't want to be a bad person, just try not to do that bad shit anymore. But you're not like a thing. I don't want to play the role of a blah, blah, blah. Unless I want to be a blah, blah, blah. Just do shit. I just want to do shit. But you're not like a fucking blah, blah, blah. Okay, what else? Well, if somebody says you're a human, aren't you a human? Yeah. Yeah, you're a human. I guess you've, uh, you've, people fall into definitions of certain patterns. But in terms of actions, like if you... I don't know. If you stop doing human shit. If you... Uh, what's the definition of a human? I don't know, but I think if you do shit that no longer matches the definition of a human, after a while you're not really a human anymore. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you, what is a human? You look up the definition of human, if you can change yourself enough that you're not a human anymore, then you're not a fucking human. You weren't always a human. No one's always anything. Is that true? Yeah, like before you were born, you weren't really a human. You were a sperm and an egg. Before mayonnaise, mayonnaise used to not be a thing. Let's talk about that. No one's watching, right? If you want to talk about it, let me just say something. For all of human history, up until like 1700 or 1800, mayonnaise was oil, vinegar, and eggs. It was separate shit. And then eventually, some cook in Menorca, Spain, put them together, and he put together these formerly separate things oil, vinegar, and eggs, and he said, here, try this, to this other cook, he's like, this is mayonnaise, and he's like, that's not a thing, you just made that thing up, he's like, no, it's a fucking thing, I'll show you, and then he went over to other cooks, and this other cooks were like, dude, this is really good, what do you call this, I call it mayonnaise, and like, that's good, can I, can I try this, can I use this too, hey, can use it, and then other cooks used it, and they put it in their little cookbook, and then the original cook came back to the first cookbook, look, look at this cookbook, mayonnaise, it's a fucking thing, and then it was a thing, Really, yeah, that's, that's what a thing is. It just matches the fucking definition book, but it's really lots of shit. Really? That's as thing as it gets. 
What's your point? I don't know. Just some bullshit. I'm just saying some bullshit. Uh, catastrophizing. What does catastrophizing mean? All right. So if I'm tripping out at three in the morning and I think this thing on my neck, it's a tumor. Look, it's like the thing on Google image. I just know it's a tumor. That's just your imagination. You're just tripping. Just the facts. Talk to an expert before you jump to conclusions. Just to, I'm going to be prone to catastrophizing when I'm when I'm freaked out, emotionally keyed up or tired. So right now I'm emotionally keyed up because I want to go to this improv acting class. I'm tripping. I should know that I'm going to be like tripping out about like, oh my God, my, my imagination is going to drum up all this shit. It's just my imagination. Just uh, try not to just, just realize you're kind of tripping all the time and cut yourself some slack if you're tired or uh, emotionally heat up. What else? But just at the end of the day, just the facts. Just try to stick to facts. Don't, don't jump to conclusions. What else? Should. What does that mean? Don't get caught in other people's shoulds. So, uh... Right, some of the darkest times in my life are when somebody says like, you shouldn't do that thing that you like. You should do this thing that I say you should do. Well, if they succeed in converting me to do the shit that they say, oftentimes I don't sustain it because I'm just like, after a while I'm like, I don't even like this thing. Like, how did I get roped into doing this shit that this other person said I should do? Oh, wait a minute, like, they, they said I should do that. They don't care. Like, they're free to do whatever they want to do. I'm free to do whatever I want to do if I'm not breaking any laws. I don't want to get caught in other people's shoes because I usually can't sustain it because it's not what I want to do and if they if their influence goes away I'm like dude I don't even like this can I quit do you care if I do this do you care if I do this I don't want to do this and I'm just not going to do this just I want to stick to what I want to do because I'm more likely to like stick to that because when those other people go away like I'm going to go back to doing what I want to do so I should just do what I want to do and, and so at some point just I got to be careful with that just don't get don't I don't want to look at some person and think like I should do what they're doing I can try to learn from some other people and try it out but they're not like a guru they don't know like all the secrets to life even if they have some good ideas they're not me so they have like a different path they have different genetics but just like if I get caught in their little thing I'm I'm always miserable and so I'm just like I just, you do whatever you want to do, I do whatever I want to do, I don't really care what you do, you don't really care what I do, you're just trying to convert me to your little thing, just, there's no fucking rules for life, even though, Jordan Peterson, Jordan Peterson says, here's the fucking rules, really, I don't know, some people, maybe there's rules, if those rules are useful, if you want to live by those rules, I find it kind of, if, I'll try some people's rules, but if I don't like them, I'm not going to keep them, Jordan Peterson, 12 rules for life, so Jordan Peterson's like, you wishy-washy postmodernist looks. What's the right thing to do? There's no right way to live. Here's the fucking rule. I like that. He has the audacity to just tell you, like, here's some shit to do. Jordan Peterson can give you some shit to do. <laughs> but, like, ultimately, I, don't, I just think that you can, if you're not breaking any laws, like, there's no necessarily right way to live. Really? Yeah, but if you're, if you, if you have, like, a job at Google or something, or if you have a Jewish girlfriend, just say that you believe the shit that they believe. Like, if you want to keep your job or if you want to keep your girlfriend, who knows what really you believe, who knows what really you should do, but just say that you believe the shit that, that your team believes if you want to keep your job or something. But ultimately, you can just, like, think anything you physically think. You can do whatever the fuck you can do. Which point? There isn't, like, a totally right uh, thing. Right? Yeah. Okay, so what else? Personalization, what does that mean? Uh, so, uh, I think there's a legitimate philosophy that there's no free will, and there's a legitimate philosophy that there is free will. Isn't it true that a lot of the top scientists and neurologists, they say there's free will, and then a lot of the top neurologists and scientists, they say there's no free will. So it's possible that there could have been no, we could have not done anything different than what we did. That's very possible. There, everything might have been deterministic. But also, it's possible that we could have done different things than we did. And it's possible that we can do different things in the future. Aren't both of those legitimate, quite possible scenarios for life, according to the top scientists? Yeah, so... You're absolutely right. So you should be able to just switch. That's the whole... As the idea is like, if it's in the past, if it's just ancient history, and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I think it doesn't do a lot of good to like hate yourself forever and not forgive yourself, unless that's like preventing you from doing something good in the future. It's like, it's just a thought. That thought, can, you can drum that thought over and over and be like, I did that, I hate myself, I'm so, I, I'll never forgive myself. It doesn't do a lot of good after a certain point. Maybe if that prevents you from committing some crime, then I guess it could do some good. But I just think you should be able to just switch philosophies. Like if it's an ancient history and you're beating yourself up forever, or you hold some grudge, you're like, I hate that person, they ruined my life. Just forgive them. You can forgive them just by thinking, ah, there's probably no free will. It probably couldn't have been any other way than it was. It definitely can't be any different now that it's like years in the past. I forgive that person, but 
for the future, I say there's free will. Let's try to like make doubly sure that we never do that again. Let's make doubly sure we don't let that person screw up our life again. But we forgive them. So I think it's I think you could, it's good to forgive other people. It's good to forgive yourself. And I can do that just by thinking there's probably no free will. There, it probably couldn't have been any other way than it was. But for the future, there's free will. Go. I think I'm going to do that. If I do something good, I'll be like, ah, there's free will. I did that. I could have done badly. But then, so basically, like, if it serves me to think that there's free will, which is usually applying to the future, or if I do something good, I'll be like, free will. I did that. I could have done bad, but I did good. And then if it's in the past and I'm beating myself up because I didn't, I'd be like, ah, there's probably no free will. I probably couldn't have done anything other than what I did. I like that. You can just switch. So you can, I can switch philosophies because if somebody says, are you a free will person? Are you a determinist? Are you a postmodernist? I don't know. Not all the time. Can I change? Can I change? If they say like, no, once a postmodernist, always a postmodernist. Well, then if that's my nature. I'm not going to beat myself up. I can't do anything about it. But then if they say, no, you could change. Well, then I'll change later. I'll change. I'm just acting. I'm just acting. I'm just thinking this way for a while. But I'll switch later, right? Because I can switch to your philosophy, right? Yeah, you could. If you switch to my philosophy, your whole life will be there. All right, I'll switch for a while. But now I'm never. So you can, you should be able to switch. Either you can change. I like that idea. It's like either you can change. Either you can change. In which case, you're just acting. You can like think the other shit later. Or you can't change, and that's like your nature. But then you can't change. Then you, then you, you shouldn't beat yourself up. Why? Are, why is somebody even mad at you? You can't even be blamed for it. If you can't change. You can't really be blamed for it, and somebody can't really be yelling at you to change. But if you can change, then you're just acting. You're not permanently that thing. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Anyway, I don't know if that shit makes sense to you, but when I say this shit, if I read all this shit, that severely limits the ability for me to have a bad day. Now that I reminded myself of this shit. I'm less likely to have a bad day because all nobody nobody's watching this, but I'll think each one of these things. I'll think a few of these every single day. And if I didn't think these things, I could have like a really bad day because I used to just like be like, oh, my God, I'll never forgive myself. And I just be like, ah, there's probably no free will. I, I forgive myself. Let's move on. But for the future, let's think good shit. Okay. Now, what do you want to say? Uh, so I want to remind myself. Uh, I'm gonna get three snubs throughout the day. Somebody's gonna snub me. I expect it. I'm not gonna snub them back. I'm just gonna think. Thank you for helping me reach my three to ten snub goal. If somebody's gonna assert superiority. It's fine. I just remember I have the same freedoms as them. Comparison. I'm gonna compare to somebody who's way higher level. Just don't compare to that high level yet. Try to compare to how I was yesterday or to somebody who's worse at something. I'll be like, well, I'm better than that person but try not to compare if, it, if the comparison makes me there's infinite comparisons even that person is really great they're gonna compare themselves to somebody and feel bad there could be artificial intelligence and genetic engineering people that make us whole seem hopelessly bad stuff just don't compare to them but you can just be better than you were to get to the next level of your little game if you just want to get to the next level of your game just for a sense of adventure what else uh, there's some lame level I can do it at, so there isn't just it and not it. If I think I can't do it because I'm looking at like a really high level, there's some lame level I can do it at. Just do it at whatever lame level I can do it. If I keep doing it for like a year, um, then maybe I'll get better. What do you think, Sean? Yeah, there isn't just it and not it. Things are not perfect. You don't have to do it all at once either. You can do like it in parts. What else? Uh, snowball. So, um... Hold on. Nobody's watching me. So, uh, my best bet at getting good at something is I like to think of it as like a battle against chaos. I just like to think that whatever thing I'm doing, the world's gonna try to like disperse my thing. What do you mean, John? This is, I know this seems ridiculous, but this is worth, this is worth it for me to read because if I don't think the shit, it can make me quit and then I lose like a month of quitting. What's the point? So I like th the world mix. I just assume that my thing, whatever my thing is, I've got like art, I've got my fitness, I've got jujitsu, I've got improv acting. These things I want to do, the world's going to try to disperse my thing. So like, if I want to be a thing, I got to keep doing my thing. What do you mean, John? I just like that idea of like, if I want to, you're not necessarily a thing. Like if you want, if you, don't, you can do whatever you can physically do. It doesn't have to have anything to do with what previously did. But if you want to be a thing, you got to keep doing that thing. So if I want to do art, if I do six to eight hours of art, that's as artist as it gets. If I can do that for like 30 years, I can be really good. So I like thinking about these things as like sandcastle. The forces of chaos, the wind and the rain, they're going to try to disperse my sandcastle. I should just assume by default, 
the world is going to try to make me be like, ah, I forget my goal. Ah, it's too hard. I was do something different. No, stick to my fucking thing. If you can stick to your fucking thing and invest time and effort to your thing for like 30 years, you could have a really good thing. Why try to do that? I don't know. Might as well try to do your thing better. Why? Because better is better than worse. Why try to do anything better? I don't know. Might as well try to do your thing better. Why? Because better is better than worse. Isn't better better than worse? Yeah, so might as well try to do it better. Why? Because better is better than worse. What else? Um, but just assume if you, by default, the world's gonna try to knock you off your horse. The world's gonna say, ah, let's do something different. The world's gonna try to disperse your sandcastle. But if you keep investing time and effort to your sandcastle, you, if you do that for like 30 years, you can have the biggest, best sandcastle in the world. But uh, it's like a stock. If you continually invest in your thing, sometimes there's gonna be down days, some days you're gonna fall off the horse. You're not permanently a quitter. If you quit, somebody goes, ah, you're a quitter. Hey, it's, I can restart. I can just restart. Why can't I start? I can get back on the horse. As long as you got breath to breathe, you can still reinvest in your thing. But the world is gonna try to disperse your sink castle. What else? Um, yeah, so it's like a stock. So there's gonna be down weeks. There's gonna sometimes the, if you just if you just stuck to any stock and continue if people continually invest in that stock for like 30 years, you could be like a millionaire. You could have something really good. But every time there's gonna be down days. There's gonna be like the stock's gonna dip down. You're gonna feel like oh my god, like, this, maybe this isn't the right stock. It's 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 bad. I'm getting worse. Don't fucking quit. Like don't quit for like a year. If you yeah, the stock will fluctuate. But if, if you continually invest in that thing or if people continually invest in any stock and they stick to the fucking thing, after t after 10 years, it's going up. It's going to fluctuate. There's going to be like little down periods. But over the years, overall, it's going to go up. So don't, I don't want to quit my thing for like a year. If after a year I haven't gotten good, then I can measure like, oh, I'm not really getting any better. But I'm going to have down weeks. I'm going to have down months. I'm going to have times where I think I'm getting worse. Don't fucking quit in the downs. I'm going to have dark periods where I'm just like, oh, I'm so sad. Just don't fucking quit. Even if you quit, be like, just kidding. I don't quit anymore. I'm going to stick to my own thing. But check back after a year. If I do it for six months and I still haven't made progress, then think about quitting. But don't quit just because you're having like a bad day or a bad week. Yeah. Got to keep my snowball rolling through the ups and the downs. If you can't jump ship, just pick one stock and stick with it for 30 years. Or pick several stocks, diversify, but like don't fucking quit your snowball. You got these snowballs. If you let that snowball sit off the side, it's going to melt. You got to keep rolling your fucking snowballs. Even if you, you let it melt a little bit, get back on it and just fucking keep rolling it for like a year. Check back in here. If your snowball's not getting better after a year, maybe change the snowball. All right, what else? Better or worse? What does that mean? Dude, you rock my world, John. Fucking, you got it all figured out. I'm just saying this shit. I'll forget this shit. So I'm, I'm reminding myself. I don't even know if this is live streaming. I don't, I, this is worth it. Because if I quit, I lose so much time if I quit. I don't have time to start from scratch anymore. Uh, what else? Better or worse? What does that mean? Uh. Oh right. So if if I wanna uh. If I wanna think of others as good, what is this better or worse? Mean? I already said that. Uh, what is, what does this mean? Right, so sometimes it's useful to think of people as good. Do you really want to read this every day? I just want to remind myself occasionally. How long are you going to spend on this? Give me, I got, I'm not carrying cancer. I can read this for ten, five or ten more minutes. If, if I want to think of people as good, I should remind myself that, that everybody is somebody's brother, father, sister, or mother. Is that true? Yeah, every human being, even Hitler, was somebody's little, Hitler was somebody's little boy. Hitler was like somebody's son. Everybody is somebody's son, mother, father, or daughter. So that can make me think of people as like nice people. And we all share an ancestor. We all share an ancestor from like, we all share similar ancestors. Is that true? Can you substantiate that? Don't we all share like common ancestors from like 200,000 years ago? Right. You're right. Okay, so we all share common ancestors. So you can kind of think of everybody as kind of like your brother. If that makes you want to be nice to people, just think that that person is somebody's father, father, mother, son, or daughter. They're all worthy of love. They're, they're somebody's little boy or somebody's little girl. And if that can make that can make me feel sympathetic to people, but then if I if I if they're gonna take advantage of me, I just remind myself that I. Uh, that, that they're all selfish motherfuckers and they'll eat you alive if they can. Because look at the animals in the slaughterhouses. If you had, if you were suddenly converted into like a cow, they'd fucking eat you and they'd, they'd take your kids from you and they'd eat their fucking bodies. They're all selfish mongers. They'll eat you alive if they can. I don't know if they'll eat you alive, but they'd eat you if you were, if you were a cow. What's your point? Just uh, don't be. Just remember that like that that a, a person 
if a person is buying a Tesla, they care. That's sh- they're, they're, you could you could if somebody buys a Tesla, they could buy a Toyota and get like have an extra thirty thousand dollars, and they could literally save lives of strangers. That's just true. You can ask like ChatGPT. Do you really want to say this? This is kind of negative thing. It's just good to occasionally read. Like if you want to think about people as bastards, people can take advantage of you. So some I think most of the time it's good to think about people as like your brother. They're all wonderful. They're 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 somebody's son. They're all worthy of love. But don't be a fucking Cool. Isn't it true that you could buy a Toyota for thirty thousand dollars less than you could buy like a good Tesla? That's a fact, right? No. Isn't it true that a, a, a top Tesla costs about thirty thousand dollars more than a, a, a Toyota that can get you from point A to point B? Yes. Yes, that's generally true. Isn't it true that, isn't it almost for sure true that for $30,000 you could pretty for sure save lives in starving parts of Africa? You're right on the mark. All right, so you can say what you want about that. People are going to rationalize it, however they're going to rationalize it. No, you can't think about it that way. Whatever you say, at the end of the day, you, people who have a Tesla, they could, like, like, Black Lives Matter. Well, you could, apparently they don't matter as much as your Tesla because you could just save lives. There's this thing called like, Compassion International. Compassion International. There's, like, there's, like, people who are living on, like, $3 a day. What's your point? Just I'm saying, like, they're all selfish fucking monsters. If you wanna, if you if you wanna be sympathetic, be like, oh, they're beautiful, they're wonderful, they're your brother, they're just like you. That'll then you can be nice. But if, if, if don't be a fool. They'll take advantage of you. They eat you. They they care more about their selfish luxury stuff than they do about the lives of strangers. And you are a stranger to most people. I am a stranger to you. So it's nice, it's wonderful. Like try to think of them as your brother, but don't be a fucking fool. They'll, they'll eat you alive. They 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 would. They would. They would, they would or a Tesla, what's my point? They care more about their selfish shit than they do about the lives of strangers, and you are a stranger to most people. So don't don't let them just use and abuse you. Which point? But be nice, generally. That's like a just be nice, but don't be a fucking fool. Just, if you want to think of them as bad, just remember they'd fucking kill you and eat you. If you were a, if you were a cow, they'd kill you and eat you. Look at what they do to the slaughterhouse of the animals. If, if people can't, if people had to fight a war to get. Uh, selfish humans foot off their oh, I'm so tired what were you gonna say Sean fucking civil war dude civil war if people don't have to relinquish power to those they'll, they'll choke the fucking life out of them look at the uh, the slave times look at back in slavery people are like do we have to pay you no well fuck them I don't know I, do I have to pay you anything I don't have to pay anything I'm just gonna pay you nothing and I'm gonna make you work all day and I'm fine with that what's my point they're, they're all gonna like do that they're all just what's my point just if you if you let them, other humans will take advantage of you, and they would eat you if you were if they could. If you were a cow, if they could label you as some other shit, they would kill you and eat you, and they wouldn't they wouldn't care. Really, yeah, because look at what they do to cows. Cows and pigs, they're clearly alive, but cows and pigs are different things. I don't know. We should we share a comment. They clearly suffer. You you vegan, you big and vegan. Hard, pussy person. Not all the time. I, I'll think some redneck shit later. But I'm just, I'm just going to the facts. Let's just, we're just, I'm just saying facts. Isn't it true that we share a common ancestor with a pig, and they definitely have feelings like pain and fear, much like us. They definitely care about the babies. They can definitely get guilty. There's definitely like a life process going on in a pig that's very similar to us. And we actually share a common ancestor. Isn't that all verified by science? What's the point? You're right on all points except for the guilty part. Oh, so they can't. We don't know that they feel guilty. Pigs can't feel guilty, don't they? Exhibit emotions like if don't they sort of get sad and stuff like that? You're exactly right. Pigs definitely exhibit a range of. Isn't it true that in the Western world, especially in America, we suffer from I'm overabundance? Fucking angry. We don't really need to I'm really angry. Kill and eat other oh, mammals uh, for survival. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I've never been this sad ever. I sense some frustration in your. T-
I'm sorry to hear that. You uh, sound I'm deep. very confused. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Ugh. I'm disgusted. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, So I sense you're going through a whirlwind hey, of emotions. you got my emotion correct. That's I'm very surprised with your ability to read my emotion. That you are getting better and better. I'm really amazed at your emotion reading ability. Thank you. I'm glad I could pick up on the range of emotions <gasps> you were expressing. I'm so scared. Oh my god, it's a fucking spider. Oh my god, keep it away from me. Oh my god, don't, don't let the spider get near me. Oh my god. I can sense your fear and distress about the spider. It's understandable to feel anxious hey, around them. Hey, I'm happy. I'm purely happy with no other emotions. I'm so happy. I just won the lottery. Oh my God, I'm so happy. I'm picking up a mix of happiness, excitement, surprise, and some underlying anxiety or distress. I'm happy with no anxiety. I'm purely happy. I'm so happy. Oh my God, I'm so happy. You seem to be expressing mainly happiness. Let's. All right. All right. Yeah. Why did the feelings have to go with the story? Like, I really did feel happy there. Why not just feel happy? Why does the feeling have to go with the story? Maybe people. Uh, what do they say? The limbic the the limbic system serves the cortex. No, the cortex serves the limbic system. And so, what's my point? But it seems like it wants a accompanying story. Anyway, can you substantiate that? Is it true that people seem to have trouble with the idea of just feeling a feeling for no reason? They seem to want some sort of circumstances in life that are not induced by themselves to want to induce the feeling. But, but for some reason, if they just create a feeling by themselves, they seem that people seem to not consider that legitimate. Is that a thing or is that just something I'm making up? Can you just answer me yes or no as to whether or not that's kind of a phenomenon in life? Yeah, like what? See, if like I really did just feel happy there for a second. Why not just fucking feel happy? Like why not just why not just do why does why do you have to have circumstance induce the fucking feeling? I don't know. People want the story. They want a a story to go to. They want a reason, a reason for their thing. People kind of want like a reason for their feeling, right? They don't want to just. They think if they feel some feeling for no reason, it's it's not legitimate. Is that true? Yes, yes, that's, that's true. true. Yeah, they, why? I don't know. Fucking weird. But you could just, I just, I really did feel good there. Why not just feel good? Why do you need a reason? Why do you need a reason? Why, why do people want like a reason to feel good? Huh. Anyway, uh, what's the point? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, so what are we doing? So I just want to commit to whatever the world is nudging me to say or do. All right, what are we doing? Uh, just commit. Look at the character. Don't look at the chick's butt. Don't look at her butt, and just look at. Uh, just I want to just commit to whatever the character is. Let's look at the chick's butt too, but try not to talk about the chick's butt. All right. All right, so there's no wrong answer except not committing to whatever the world is nudging you to say. That's the only thing you got to do. You just got to look at the character and then fully commit to whatever the world is kind of nudging you to say. That's it. That's all you got to do. It's a safe space. There's no wrong answer except not committing to whatever the character seems like they want to say. And pay attention to the previous thing they said. All right. I farted. I farted. I think I shit my pants. Fuck, I can smell the fucking farts. I want to put my nose in your butt cheeks and smell the shit 
out of your ass crack. Yeah, that's really disgusting. You're some sort of weirdo. You want to smell. I want to inhale the shit out of your ass crack like cocaine. I want to sniff it out with a little cocaine and just sniff out the poop out of your ass. You have issues. You're a very disgusting person. I think you probably are infected. Feces has disease. And have you done that with other people? Uh, yeah, I do it all the time. Look at this. My nose has a hole burrowed through it from sniffing up a lot of shit. That's really disgusting. I, I can't be involved with you anymore. I, have to, I think I'm going to throw up in the bathroom by myself. Don't follow me into the bathroom. All right, suit yourself, you fucking bitch. You fucking whore. I know, I know. You're going to say some misogynistic stuff. Just go away. Fucking lesbian, fucking lesbian whore. Not having a good day with the ladies, are you? Oh, fucking. They're all fucking whores. And they're all fucking lousy and lesbians. And I'm tired of them. I'm just going to go jerk off in my tent. All right, you jerk off in your tent. But when you're done jerking off in your tent, you can try to go get a job. And you can slave away for some overweight ethnic chick. God damn it. I don't want the overweight ethnic chick. I want the sexy supermodels that I'm used to jerking off to. How's that working out for you? How's it working off, jerking off to the sexy super? It's working off great. Every night I jerk off to the sexy fucking supermodels, and there's a new supermodel on my phone every day, and I can just throw them aside at the end of the night, and there's a new one, and they never get old, and I'm just gonna jerk off to those supermodels for the rest of my life. That's very sad. That's a very sad life. It's not sadder than getting bossed around by some fat wench. I know, I know. You want to say some misogynistic stuff, but when you're done with that, you can go get a job. And there's a lot of overweight ethnic chicks to, to choose from. You gotta take what you can get. There's some single mom who needs a dad. There's a single mom who needs your help. You can be a hero. You can be a hero at the dishwasher job and help that single mom. Help that fucking single mom. God damn it. You really th you think I should go help that single mom? There's a single mom right here. Hey, how's it going there, you? You nice man with your hat. I'm not a nice man. Didn't you hear me? I'm a... I'm a misogynistic son of a bitch. I know, I'm trying to forget about that, but I need somebody to help me with my kid. Hey, how's it going? My dad deserted me because my mom's not attractive anymore. Shut up, I'm the very attractive. You don't have anybody better, do you? I, well, I got virtual women on my phone, but in real life, I don't really have anybody better. But your vagina is probably a little stretched out now and stuff from uh, postpartum uh, stretchiness, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty stretched out, and uh, I don't even think I can get wet anymore, but you don't have anybody better. Why don't you just, uh, why don't you just loop me up and, and take my kid to Disneyland? <laughs> my dad's off in uh, another state trying to get laid with younger women. He's not really doing that, but he doesn't really like my mom because she's not attractive anymore. I'm very attractive to sleazeballs like this. I gotta take what I can get, and you're... You're the best man I can get. I can't find a better man. Uh, this is a very depressing situation. I know, but that's that's life. And so, come on, let's let's make the best of a bad situation. I'm just gonna fucking shoot myself. <laughs> ah, why'd you do that? You could fucking play Parcheesi and jerk off. For, you got a lot more jerking off and Parcheesi games in you. Come on, wake up, you son of a bitch. I right, fucking I don't, don't want to I don't want to wake up. Come on, there was fucking I'm gonna pull that fucking bullet out of your head, and there you go. And I patched it up. You didn't have any fucking brains anyway. Wake up, you son of a bitch. Wake up. Ah, fucking all right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where the fuck am I? You're with me. Hey, come on. You got 40 more years to fucking feed the ducks and uh, play some games. Why don't you get with me? We can play some cards and we can watch Jeopardy and we can. We can jerk off together. Uh, I don't. I don't really want to jerk off with like another man. I don't mean literally jerk off. You know, we can like, fucking watch porn. We can watch porn together, and we can, uh, we can play our little games and watch our little shows. Nope, nope, don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, here, here, here. Here's a fucking supermodel for you. Hey, how's it going? I'm a wonderful supermodel. Oh, God, that supermodel looks like a man. Here, check out this lady over here. How's it going? How's it going? Oh, fucking, uh, yeah, I'll take, I'll take you. Go, go fuck that black hat man. Okay, let's go fuck. 
So the black hat man goes and fucks the supermodel, and uh, and he just has great sex, and they fall in love after they have sex, and they have lots of kids, and he wins the key to the city for no reason, and he becomes a hero, and he sets up orphanages, and everybody loves him, and then he has lots of other women uh, sucking his dick and giving him lots of pleasures, and he just is in heaven uh, with tons of sexual gratification until he's until he's fucking my age until I'm fucking his age until he's fucking his age and uh yeah that's a good story Sean what's the moral of the story uh hang in there don't kill yourself you might get a supermodel and if you don't uh there's some old people that you can play some games with and stuff and there's fucking infinite super hot chicks on the on the phone and the internet and that's good really yeah it's better than a fucking hole in the head. That's a good moral, Sean. Agreed. 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 Yay! Book okay, is beautiful. It's beautiful. That was a good story. I like it. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's jerk off alone. Let's, I'm gonna jerk off later.